Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Town of Camden Select Board meeting for March 26th, uh, 2019. Um, before we go into our agenda, I wanted to talk to briefly about two agenda-related items. Uh, one is a um, one of the agenda items that we have we're going to propose to table, which is a discussion on the proposed legislation to change the minimum state shoreline zoning standards. The reason is um, this is a relatively very, very, very new uh, uh, legislation, and it seems like it's in the very formative stages, So I was, and there are going to be numerous workshops and things going forward. So uh, what I would suggest, um, uh, Audra, is we go forward and your staff determines it's time for the select board and the, and the public to read into this so we could bring it back to the agenda. If that's okay with everybody. The other one was more of a comment on agenda uh, development in particular, because um, some questions were raised. Um, a week ago, we'd established the agenda for tonight's meeting, and at that time, we were under the uh, gun to make a decision on the parking lot uh, decision of uh, mechanic Washington Street, because the, the uh, uh, contractor at that time was wanted to mobilize the first week in April, I believe April 7th or something, um, it turns out a day later, the contractor said, well, I can't, it's, it's too short notice. Um, I'm going to have to move this project out to September, but I'll hold the price. The good news, the bad news was it's going to go out to September. The good news is it gave us some time to take a breath. Um, we are in, uh, currently involved, and Audra can talk about a little bit if you want to, but uh, just basically what's going on is we're looking at um, uh, a different uh, design option for those parking lots based on import, uh, we, and it's important to get that documented because you don't want to be verbally discussing changes to a design because things can fall in a crack and cause a problem during construction. So what well, logically it will happen, it'll take a few weeks to develop that uh, revised design and it will be brought to the table probably in early May. Is that accurate? I'd say it'll be ready then, yeah. Okay, good. So that's why it's not on the agenda, and I know that confused me. There's a lot of interest in this uh, uh, element in town, a lot, a lot of interest, and I just want everybody to think we, we've uh, put it on the shelf. We haven't. It's just, just we're doing it. Uh, since we have time, let's do it right. Are, are, are you going to – is this the extent of what we're going to say about that? Tonight. Yeah. I feel like people would probably – Audra can talk about it a little bit if she wants to. I mean, it's, I, mean I think some – I'm getting emails nonstop about this. Me too. It's very difficult. I know where I, my opinion has been the same the entire time, but I can't tell if, like, I don't know what to say to people because understand. it feels like maybe all the input has caused a shift. Um, but I think we should say tonight, we're just going to keep getting emails from very concerned people if we don't. Say helpful to well, talk about the new guys. design yeah, that's what are the, worked on. So the new design is pretty much what was originally discussed, which is fixing the retaining wall and then sort of regrading the area above it so the wall can be lower and um, you know, doing some paving work on that area above in the the drive up there and then um, fixing the pavement to the mechanic street lot because the sub base needs to be replaced before that can be repaved. And then basically, you know, once that's repaved, restriping it as is. So no design change? Uh, not, no, not really. I mean, the only, the only sort of changes would be the steps are going to be included yeah. and, you know, the wall is going to be lower than it is now and the area is going to be yeah. regraded. Yeah. The Washington Street lot is likely going, because of cost factors, will be left out of, you know, the, the project, so right. it's not going to be repaved. But not even repaved. I mean, well, we, but this is where we want to get no, into a lot, a lot of discussion of, about like design because we have to work to the budget. Done. And not we would like, we're going to have to evaluate whether or not the budget can withstand a repaving of that piece. But the important elements that Audra explained and what people's concern is, of course, is the drive through that will be maintained. Right. Um, the, the, the striping will be maintained as right. is on Mechanic Street. Oh, and I, I forgot one part. Um, there would be some underground drainage and a new um, oh, yeah. storm drain put in so right. that the right. area above right. drains better than it does now. And there's a lot of details. So what's logically going to happen here is, uh, one second, Mark, is, is the, uh, uh, we're going to draft a design or some form. Is, we're going to have time to comment on it internally before we, we're going to bring it back to this arena. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a little bit more development work, but that's conceptually, this is the reason why 
you really can't talk about pieces of design about grading until you see it on a piece of paper. But we do, we should look at, and we will look at Washington Street, whether repaving is uh, functionally in the budget or not. But Mark, you wanted to make a comment? Yeah, I just want to say we're, we're presenting this as this. Um, a lot of people put a lot of work into the design, and I understand there are some problems with it, and I agree that there's some problems with it. But instead of sitting there and saying this is the way it's going to be without having those people that put years of work into this to have them any kind of input and discussion about why did we make these changes, why did we make this design, the fact that we've sort of said, well, we're just going to go ahead and do it, do what's there now. I don't think that's fair to the people that put all the work in. I think they should at least have, there should at least be a meeting and a conversation about, you know, so maybe there's a middle ground about the design instead of just, well, this is the way we're going to do it, this is what we're asking for, yeah. um, because we've just dismissed basically the work they've done. Yeah. This is exactly why I don't want to get a discussion about design, except for the schedule. We have time to look at the elements. We will look at the elements before we bring it to this arena as a second option or third option, and we eventually will vote on an option. So another thing, um, as soon as we have, you know, that sort of um, the plan done where it's, it's mm -hmm. basically kind of just repairing what we have now, mm -hmm. Um, once that's complete, we'll post that online with the the design brought forward by the design committee, and you know okay. allow people to give additional comments and feedback so Perfect. that before May everybody's had a chance to see both. And the good news is we have some time. Yes. Okay, so that's what we'll, we'll forward with. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I just want to mention that sometimes we don't Allison really. Has a question. I'm sorry, Allison, I missed your little hand. Um, so are we going to then be voting on a design? It seems like before we spend more money, I mean, we already learned that we've spent a fair amount of money with multiple iterations of design work. So mm -hmm. it seems like the concept, before we spend more money on that, the concept should be there so that at least they could have a directive of, is it okay to lose parking spots or not? Because to just put all this, go around and around and come up with this n another new design and then put them all online and then we're all going to well, vote on which design or at, that, or at that point then are we saying that they, we could mash the two designs together and then once again spend more money designing? I, I really another. don't. I think that your, your kind of choices at this point, because time is not limitless if you want to you know, do the project this construction season. Of course, if you don't want to do it this construction season, it opens it up to whatever you want to do. But if the goal is to get this done, you know, by NITRAM during September when they said they can still do it, you really need to make a choice between sort of an option which is basically repairing what we have and an option which is, there's a, a number of designs that have already been done for that parking lot. so. We could put all the work that everybody's done. You know, it, it doesn't just have to be that one design that the design committee came forward with. There's a few others, but I don't think at this stage we're at a point where you can workshop this and continue to oh, go no, back. I don't. And, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to do anything. No, no. I want to leave exactly the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, first of all, from an engineering perspective, what Andrew is going to do is develop. A, just a concept sketch to start with. That's what we're going to. That's what we're going to look at. So we can tweak it, and we, we won't get to a draw an actual redesign for. It'll take a little while to get to the redesign, actual redesign. So we're not spending a lot of time. But if you just don't want to talk about the elements of design and just you'd say, okay, that's cool. We, we love that concept and have no paper to prove it. I know, but the major thing that people are concerned about is this parking spot situation. So we could just resolve that tonight, well, even to let people. No, okay, where does the select board stand on what we're willing to put forward in terms of parking space well, loss? Well, the concept which, that Audra's speaking to doesn't change any but, parking. No, no, but so you... we didn't vote on that. I mean, the last, I feel like it's a little unfair because the last time that there was a vote, mm -hmm. it was two to three and new design one over. Yeah. So really the last word from the select board has been mm -hmm. that the design can go forward as is. And I th so I think it's understandable that people well, are confused about. I agree. Well, yeah, but we can. But I don't. We're not going to be able to address mm -hmm. all the elements of design here tonight. Do you not want to say? No. no well, I, I don't. I think. I think. That, losing, for me, I, well, for <laughs> fundamentally, we, we, I think we need to. What we need to do is take a breath 
And uh, we need to do is see what Andrew comes back with and take a look at what he's proposing for the revised design. Th at that point, you'll see whether or not he's recommending one parking space or zero. I guess that's my, so, I, like, I'm more com comfortable with it as long as we're being clear on what the directives to Andrew were for the second one. If, right. if we're being really clear that the directives were you fix what needs to be fixed, but essentially the design of the lots stays the same with the exception of maybe um, cosmetic improvements. But the lots are restriped the same way, and there's still going to be two entrances and exits. Is, if that's what's being made clear, then I'm not that, that, yeah. that, that is what's being made. That is what's been, that's what I said. So right. we'll have when I entered, at least two options made to us. Right. Well, in, in May. In, in perturbations <clears throat> later. But yes, the, basically, Audra said that. She said the, the Mechanic Street and, and the, quote unquote, at this point, wasn't touching Washington Street. So that's no change um, in, the, in the concept he's working on. But the, the Mechanic Street was basically what she said was repaving it as is right. and restriping it as is. Yeah, no, I think it was clear to me, but I just, I'm, I'm repeating it out loud Good. intentionally. Good. I mean, nobody had heard. Taylor say that or you said, like the last time there was a vote it was different and so I feel like it's being presented to people as they're hearing one thing in a public meeting and then we're coming back and saying oh we've decided to give the directive as this but it which is different than what was said last all we said is we want a piece of paper to work on so we can refine our directives at in the next couple of weeks to get to a point in May where we all have something we can look at and either finally vote on or, or, or it, we're going to have input between now and May. But so when did we make the decision that we're going to leave the Washington, that the Mechanic Street lot would be a higher priority than smoothing out the Washington Street lot? Well, yeah. you need to do, if, if the priorities are, as I understood it, fixing the wall, then you can't really fix the wall and just leave that right. lot. And the pavement is in much worse condition on the Mechanic Street lot than it is on the Washington Street lot from a sub sub base and well, drainage and perspective. All, we also have a budget issue to deal with here. That's part of what's driving some of this redesign to maintain, but stay within budget. So would we be eating up the entire 209,000 or what, whatever was allocated at town meeting to do the Mechanic Street lot then and not? And the retaining wall plus all the engineering Okay. It'd, be, it'd be less than so, two But then we're going to... A little bit less, but not enough to do all the regrading and repaving of Washington Street. So what went out to voters, so was that it was going to be both lots for that. Right, but I was told I needed to make cuts to get it under in mm -hmm. budget, and that's one of the cuts we needed to make to get it within the budget. I guess until so where I'm trying to and repaving. where that, pro like, where that process of prioritizing mm -hmm. happens. When, like well, when you told Rick and I to go back and get it down within the budget, budget. That was a that's one of February. the things that we needed to do. So then Rick decides this is a priority versus Right, that. Okay, right, that from like sense. a technical perspective. I remember in February we voted and the directive was to bring it within budget. Yeah. Right, and keep the current design. Or the directive was, was to get it within budget. To you can't keep the, the same design. design and keep it within budget. That doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Right. So that so the directive is clear in my opinion, uh, and we we we, okay. we need to get some paper to talk to it. I agree with you. I think we need to, and we, maybe we'll talk about it between now and, and May, perhaps. But I think we're hoping to get something that we're reasonably confident collectively that we can vote on to get the project moving forward in May. Whatever that is, we don't have yet. We're going to develop it. We don't have to rush it. How much more money? We've already it's what not, have we spent twenty thousand dollars. I would, I would agree with Allison one hundred percent that really, you know, I think the choice needs to be between the plan that you know you talked about and was voted on before, and this the new direction right. we're coming up with, which is trying to cut it back to stay within the two ten and also keep all the parking spaces, keep the entries how they are. Mm -hmm. I think if we try to you know, redesign this and come up with a compromise solution, we're just going to waste a lot of time yeah. getting nowhere. I have to say, at least the design people should have an ability to, to, you know, look at the new design and maybe make a couple suggestions. Mm -hmm. You know, if we have one of the reasons, there are a lot of reasons they made the design changes they did. And I sat through all those meetings for two years looking at it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and, oops, sorry, I'll take a break here. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons they made the, just some of the changes is <coughs> this plans there, the spots there are not to code, they are smaller than current cars, the, the getting in and out of that parking lot is difficult, <coughs> the getting in and out of the Washington 
a uh, lot is even in some ways more difficult to park there. And people don't park there because it's such a difficult lot to park in. So they were making changes based on some needs from code and things like that. Um, I would like to see them before we say, oh, we've made a decision to just go ahead and do this the way it is. Have some input and maybe give them a chance to say, well, maybe we can make some serious changes and keep most everything but maybe we take away one spot to make the spaces a little wider, and here's the reason. Mm -hmm. I'd like to mm -hmm. see a little input from the people who spend time. I would, I would say that's why we're moving this to May and not doing this like tonight. Absolutely. That's right now, we're, it was a discussion about we're going to do it this way. And no, 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 it never been said. Remember, what we're doing here is we're, we've asked for or come within budget. Audra and Rick have approached this thing with, an, with some ideas to bring it within budget and also to maintain some of the existing design elements because that's going to be required to keep it within budget. So that will be discussed between now, be discussed between now and when we bring it to the table in May. So we're going to go, we're not going to be able for this because it wasn't an agenda item, but we just agended it. But in uh, any event, um, that's good, good discussion, really. Um, Want to go to now to our agenda? Actually, <laughs> yeah. We agended it. We agended. We agended it. We, what the heck? Um, but I want to start with the actual agenda and ask for any public input on non-agenda items. BD. Um, I'm going to start with the agenda. Um, I think we have to press, press the button. <laughs> Thank you, BD. Green. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm B.D. Parker. I live up Washington Street, and I have a couple things to say uh, quickly. <laughs> and uh, one is that a lot of people walk down Washington Street. We've just been through a ton of ice, and I've been going to each town manager for three town managers' worth, and this is not to point to you at all. It's just it's expensive to keep up the roads and the sidewalks and the drainage and the more downpours we have the worse it's going to be and you know it, all the work that needs to be done but I want to speak for this very slopey driveway across the sidewalk which is the first driveway after Alden Street and it's like that and I've talked to um, architect friend Boston area he says you really could get sued badly for that slope and mostly people just go out in the street because if there's any problem, it's just you can't walk across a sideways slope if there's any. It angles toward the street? Yeah, and what it is is when uh, Collie came, every, they wanted everything to be as uh, cement, right, concrete. Mm -hmm. So there's asphalt in the driveway and asphalt in the street and then there's this big concrete block which is going <clears throat> more and more and more and if I were you I'd just rip it out and put in asphalt which would be cheap and make the slope so we can mostly walk on it I mean not always because it's always a slope but it'd be a lot safer and um, I I think nobody just walks on it when it's slippery at all. So that's that's my set piece. I just have a little bit more to say, which is um, some of us on Historic Resources Committee are going around trying to get people to put date plaques on their houses so that they'll everybody will kind of value their houses more. And this is an effort to get raised sensitivity to the way the town looks, how it feels, sort of the New England look. And I'm going to be doing with another friend the, the, the wrong side of Route 1, which is up Washington Street and Mechanic. Mountain. So um, I feel good about walking around doing that. And at the same time, I'm going to look for places where street trees could be planted. Because the Garden Club goes along really steadily, you know, a few every year. I just think that, you know, if it is going to get hotter, that we want to have that shade ready for it, and we don't want to struggle with trees and hot summers, droughts, which we've had a couple. And uh, we maybe could speed up some shade tree planting. So we're going to look for locations and, you know, don't have any plan of how to do it or money or anything, but just sort of we, see. You got there. Yeah. 
Thank you, Beatty. Thank you very much. Town nursery going eventually. Yeah. We haven't forgotten him at my house. Does anybody else in the public want to speak to a non-agenda item? Okay, not seeing any. We're going to. Yeah. Sl no, no, what? No, you, you guys are on the agenda. We're on the agenda. <laughs> nice try. Ski club? No. What? I'm sorry. Is, isn't this? Oh, I'm sorry. Come, come on up. <laughs> I guess so many checks. These checks coming out of the woodwork here. Thank you, Beth. I think, I think as a pr we should never turn down people with checks. Yes, especially big ones. You can definitely speak. Especially big ones. Um, so my name is Audrey Lovering, and this is Leah Nickerson, and we are here on behalf of One Community, Many Voices, and we partner with Beth and her amazing team at the Snow Bowl every year to put on the Ragged Mountain Scuttle which is at the end of September. So we're a little bit behind of presenting the big check, but don't worry, the small check has already hit the bank. <laughs> so um, what we really wanted to do tonight was to publicly thank Beth and her crew for being such an amazing partner with the Scuttle. Uh, we're going, we're already gearing up for the sixth year. Last year we had over 350 people across Maine come to the Scuttle, experience the Snow Bowl, um, and had a wonderful time. And if you have not attended um, or you're hesitant of buying your tickets yet like buy them today because this is the lowest price um, and the scuttle if you're not sure it's an obstacle course that has about 20 obstacles um, throughout the course 5k. 5k you can do it at your own pace um, any type of person with any kind of background of um, level of exercising is um, is welcome to join and excel and what has been really for us at One Community Many Voices wonderful is that we're able to give money back to the Snowball more than what our contract has because they're such an amazing partner and this year we're giving 4,500 which is rightfully so and it is going again to the fourth grade ski program to help um, invite more kids to participate and to learn how to how to ski. So we just wanted to thank Beth and say get ready because we're gearing up for year number six. Yeah. So yeah. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah. Like just to say I I was out of town in September and when I was out of town my wife and son decided my twelve year old son at the time decided to go participate in the scuttle and my son beat my wife which she was sort of upset about. Um, <laughs> but they had a great time. And loved it, and uh, you know, I was sort of glad I was out of town because he would have beat me too. And <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Otherwise, nobody will hear you. Uh, Otherwise, nobody will hear you. Oh. Yeah. Oh. What type of obstacles are we talking about in the scuttle, and can older people do it comfortably, and I so forth? And what did you do to get congratulated for? Oh, I'm, I, I, I'm Beth. I work at the Snowball. Snowball. Yes. And so that's why. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. Um, so okay. the so, obstacles so. vary from anywheres of um, carrying a sandbag up a hill, which apparently I marked it and I only went halfway up the hill and got so many complaints that people wanted to go. It wasn't hard enough. So be prepared, there's two levels this year, um, to climbing over walls and there's a wide variety. Um, and what is amazing that through the five years, we now have a partnership, and I'm gonna apologize in advance if I do not have their title right, but it's part of the industrial program at the prison. So um, we work with them to uh, produce some of our obstacles that then we can leave and have permanently on the mountain for people to use year-round. So it's been a great way of building partnerships throughout Knox County to, to help. So, and here's a, any age can do it. And here's a little trick. You can do as much as you, you, can do as much as you want. Like if you don't like it, like there's certain things that kind of make me nervous and I just go around that obstacle and keep going. Yeah. So you don't 
You don't have to complete every obstacle in order to get whatever a certificate or something accomplished. You get a fancy and, medal. And, and how much of the sand, how much of the sandbags weigh? There's three different options. What's the lightest one? Good. Yeah. I got a 20 pound limit. You're oh, ready. You're ready. You're ready. You're ready. Right. Oh, you're ready. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> one more comment. That uh, chairlift thing that you do yeah. in the fall, I assume you're going to do it again? Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. For all ages, including babies going up and you sure. see them coming. Sure. They're all smiling and we're talking to them on the way up. You know, it's cool. Like, Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so. Congratulations, Beth, for all your hard work, and thanks for, thanks for the check. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Well, and I, I just, wonderful. I think it's important that oftentimes you hear complaints in City Hall, and we wanted to show that we could not even come up with this idea without Beth and her team. I mean, it's just amazing, and it's fun. I mean, it's for a it's a good time. So it's always nice to hear good news. Yeah. September. Uh, Plenty of time to train. 29th. September twenty. September twenty ninth. Yep. So. Thank you so, so much. So thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. We would love good news. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it right here. All right. Yeah. So if you could stand in the picture too, that would be. No, that's it's so bad. That's right. It's for, you. <laughs> it's for her hard work, not ours. <laughs> Get Taylor out of there, please. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Beth. Uh, are there any other public input on non-agenda items that I've missed? <laughs> Apparently not. On to select board reports. Um, Taylor, do you want to start? Um, yes. Um, I'll give a quick update um, on the Inland Harbor Mooring Group. Um, we met again two weeks ago. Um, Paul Lieber was going to come tonight, um, but I think due to the large agenda, I'd, we're going to hold off um, until next time, maybe the time after. But we've been ma making good headway. Um, we're working off of, primarily off of an ordinance that the town of Harrison drafted um, a few years back, and it's been tested in court and pretty simple, and um, the state likes it as well. So that's given us something to um, start from a simple, um, a simple place, um, focusing on just two mooring areas um, that exist now and moving them a little bit um, to make some room for the rowing club and to make things a little easier at Boggs Bridge. And um, we'll see where that takes us, but um, everybody seems to be on the same page as of now. Can I have a question about yeah. that. So are you, are you jumping right into like, let's have an ordinance or is it was it explored? Do you like the thought of, do we need an ordinance? Yeah, I think, I, th I think in talking to the state, an ordinance feels like it's the best way to go, um, simply because it gives it gives the town teeth to be able to deal with it. Should we have to? Um, that said, I think everybody agrees the simplest, the simplest, the the better, um, and um, just not getting out ahead of our skis. But, uh, have, have you settled on like a, this is our goal? Or the this is the major problem that we want to solve, and this is yeah. The, the, so is there an agreement? Like, I mean, I think our mission agreement? our mission after the first couple of meetings was to focus on you know, the primary concern was overloading the moorings that are out there now because there's no regulation for moorings <laughs> as, as it stands. So theoretically, anybody could put a mooring anywhere they want, with the exception of following state law. And there was I think the big concern was that we we're going to see you know double or triple the amount of moorings that's out there, and that became an issue for boating navigation for swimmers and um, just a conflict of user groups. So um, where we've, there's a pretty good cross section of people that represent different user groups on the board now. Um, I think that uh, where we've landed is um, two areas for moorings that would be defined, um, keeping the one in Barrett's Cove where it is now. Um, there's a member of the rowing clubs board on the committee. So we've been talking with him about how, how we can define that area so that it doesn't affect the rowers coming in and out and so we're staying away from the swimming zone as well. Um, it'll, we haven't quite figured out exactly what that area is going to be, but um, it won't change too much from what it is now. It's going to be a matter of figuring out how many, how many moorings you can fit in inside the area. And then Boggs Bridge, um, we're looking at actually moving that um, a little farther up 105 so it's not in, not in viewscapes and so that 
um, there's a little bit deeper water and outside of the channel. When is your next meeting with this? Uh, we haven't set it yet, but I, it'll be in the next two weeks. Yeah. I think it's, it would be prudent to have um, a discussion we were going to have today, but didn't do it to have, yep. as soon as possible, because I would agree we need to discuss where the problem areas identified and what the what the solutions have been analyzed, where you know that kind of thing. I think it's important to have that collectively here, rather than I'm not. No, you're not saying that, but rather than heading down, you know, one direction without you know bringing it back and getting thrown back at you, kind of thing. Sure. Yeah. I mean, so we'll do we'll do that as soon as possible. I think that everybody's prepared to. Good. Um, yeah. Have a have final. To, we have to have the discussion at this level. I think it'd be good because okay. it sounds like you get some formative information to discuss about where the problem areas are perceived to be, uh, where they could be, and, and what may be. The yeah, I mean, I think everybody in that group agrees what the problems are. Okay. Um, so, you know, if that differs from folks, you know, I, I think the thing to make clear is that a lot of issues have come up in talking about the moorings, and we've agreed to stay away from things that, to focus on the moorings now, come up with a solution to that. I think that's going to be an ordinance. And then, obviously, through this, the conversation of looking at the, the moorings, other issues have come up, other safety issues, other user group issues, and that we, once the mooring, once we figured out the best way to deal with the moorings, that a list of other potential um, user group and access issues would be presented to the select board. Hey, we want to talk about these as well. This committee can still go forth and work on that after we've solved the mooring issue. And then, like, I think some of the concern is that we don't create something that's a huge administrative burden for the right. town, or even like yes. a small one. Yep. When I've, I'm becoming more and more conscious, spending more time here, like how much time all of this stuff takes, yeah. and just being sure that you know every time we add a layer of yep. stuff, it's you know sometimes unfortunately we actually have to decide. Well, yeah, maybe this would be better, but we don't have the resources mm. to. Yeah, I think, I mean, that certainly is a, was talked about quite a bit. I think that, and that's why keeping it as simple as possible yep. makes the most sense. Of course. Um, so without going too far into the weeds, I mean, that's definitely been key yeah, taken into consideration. Let's, let's so. get, we'll get, we're going to push as soon as we can ASAP to get in front of the select board. I think it'd be really good. Yep. And, uh, but any, um, that, that all in your report? That's good Allison, for now. Do you have anything yeah. you want to report on any issues? Yes. Issue? Oh, good. Um, so we've continued with the digitizing of some town records. Um, nice little sample for us up here. Um, I've, this is what I've been spending a huge amount of time on, just like testing out different ways of doing it. And we've now finally gotten to the part where um, we, I've recruited a few volunteers. Um, we had our first session. There's lots that um, needs to be done just in terms of, you know, everything from the actual scanning to the um, putting things in sleeves later. This this book here is from, did I already tell everybody about this? I'm not sure, but um, this is a book of roads from the 1800s, and all towns have them. And um, it's like the original votes from every, um, from every road that we laid out. So like what the vote was, a lot of the time people just had a farm and everybody decided, okay, well, we're gonna, we really need to put a road through there. And so it says, you know, we met at, per we're gonna meet at Pearl Street at the house of so-and-so at 9 a.m. and so-and-so has three months to get their horses off of the property and the fence down and the, it's, it's really cool. Um, and it's, um, this is all finished. We just got the first 250 pages of it. So that's online, anybody can look at it. Um, and then the other parts of it are things like um, the, no, there's town meeting records, um, select board minutes. Um, and these are all like typewritten. And it's been really interesting to go and like look at how the, the job of select board has evolved over the years. I mean, they used to spend. Or not. <laughs> no, it really has. I mean, we've got all kinds of time to do all this stuff that is sort of fun, but really, historically, what they were doing most of the time was worrying almost exclusively about the roads and about assessments. That's all they did. That you know, they were going out there and doing, like a lot of towns still do, um, going out and evaluating how much everybody's property was worth, and then people were coming in, and so like that consumed most of their time and it didn't allow them to, you know, here we're getting all excited about these little pet projects and 
I think it's a lot more fun to be on the select board now. But so that's been interesting. Um, and then now we've got the first six year we have we did from 1932 to 1938. Um, and you can search for any word in there. It's all on, this is all online. It's um, searchable. This, anything, yeah, like the, um, the ones that are typewritten are searchable. searchable. Um, but like you can search for the word here, clerk. Um, and it'll show you, you know, every instance of the word clerk through it. And it does a really good job, even though it's kind of an old document. Mm -hmm. So um, we've had a lot of interest with volunteers, and we're making progress. The big thing that we need now, and I'd really like to try to not spend any of the town budget money on it, is I've been using my own computer to hook up to the software, and that works great when I'm doing it. Um, but now we need a computer it. that can be set up with the system. Dedicated uh, machine. Yes, ideally a laptop because the system is kind of portable, so it would be nice to be able to take it to some other places. I was thinking of almost asking for the select word computer that I returned. Maybe that one's still available, mm -hmm. but do you have a computer, Mark? Is that what you were going to say? No, I was, well, the one thing I was going to say, I'm looking at the note up there from 1925, and I noticed one of the select board members was named French. And I was thinking, did John French really go back that uh, far? Hey, don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> That's Is he cool. on the board that long? <laughs> That's cool. Um, um, well, probably family members. Yeah. But um, so we need, okay. we need a computer. We and, can figure um, that out. I'm sure we, we can also, figure that out. Also, there's been so much interest. Even Andrew, who does the facility maintenance in the building and is really good at noticing lots of things, he... Well, during working hours one day, came and knocked on the door and said he, that he wanted to volunteer. Cool. We have a town employee come, and he's perfect because he knows where to put things in this building too. That's when great. we're done, so it's exciting. So it's been very, Good. very fun. Um, if anybody wants to volunteer, they can email me. Did you have the dates for town cleaning? Oh, that's on the agenda. That's it is? the agenda item. Yeah, it's the last thing. Yeah, that was going to be my select board last report. Item? Jenna has done a great job doing that. Where is it? My blind. I like the um, flyers. Is it better? It, well, it's I don't supposed see it. to be on the I agenda, looked at right? That's right. right up. Is it? I don't Com see it. Can clean communities, 70? No. No. no the no. roadside cleanup, is that what? Oh, that's not yeah. on here. I was just going to no. give the dates yeah. for it. And it's, it's, yeah. it's not. Yeah, I didn't see it on the agenda. Well, maybe Jenna can do that on her select board. That was okay. my plan. Oh, yeah. Thank you, <laughs> but we'll let Mark go for her out. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, number of things. One, the uh, Energy Committee met last uh, met yesterday, and they will have a report for us on I think four or five different options for uh, solar projects and solar solar panels, uh, including parking lot at the Snow Bowl, uh, the uh, um, the land from the. Uh, um, Mico Solid Waste. I can't remember. Uh, Mico Solid Waste um, and a couple others um, with prices and everything. So they've done a lot of research. So we'll be getting, we'll see that report soon. They're just going to finalize it and send it. And uh, the Opera House Committee was supposed to meet tonight, um, and but they had to, they did it um, digitally <coughs> because somebody couldn't attend. And a couple things are happening with the Opera House. One, we have a new assistant. Uh, Dagny Ernest is starting 329. Um, she worked with Billy uh, Shoe for a long time. She's great. And uh, she's replacing Katrina, who is uh, uh, having a child and is going to take care of her for her children. Um, so, um, so we'll have a new member in the in the family here. Um, and there are a bunch of projects coming up. Uh, Camden International Film Fest uh, does a Wednesday movie once a month, and that one Sip Selects is tomorrow night. Um, there is a concert here on Friday night, Low Lily and Mile 12, which looks to be really good. Um, April 8th is, uh, we have, we've been doing a, a classic film of some sort, a documentary or something on Monday nights once a month. And the next one is Rare Window, which I believe is the Alfred Hitchcock classic. So that should be great. Um, the next Blue Cafe is on April 19th, and one of the reasons I bring that up, Dave is getting tremendous, that's the free concert on the third floor of the Opera House. <laughs> On f once a, a Friday every month. Dave's getting tremendous. Uh, a lot of people want to book for that. It's booked through November now. Um, he's having a great response, so it's coming. And then there's. What month? It's booked through November. 
it's it's and he can't he can't handle all the people that want to be a part of it because it's it's a great thing. And then uh, the next Maine made music, which is concerts that he's putting on using Maine artists, will be uh, on April 27th with Micromass and Sarah, Sarah Halley Richardson. Um, and then he's already working on bookings for, um, I've mentioned the next booking for uh, Windjammer concert is Roger McGuinn, who is the leader of the Birds. Um, he'll be here. He's already working for the following year, and he's working on, has some possibilities for Winterfest next year. So we're working way ahead, um, getting some, some great acts for the Opera House. So lots of great things going on there. Thank and you, Thank you very much. Jenna. Excellent. All right. Well, I just want to bring up one um, one item, which is that our annual roadside cleanup is coming up. This will be the third year, um, and it sort of was inspired by my dad. It's a bit of a memorial and a wonderful thing to do for Earth Day. His birthday was April 17th. The cleanup this year will be Friday, April 12th, and Saturday, April 13th. Everyone will um, is invited to congregate in the parking lot at Hannaford. Um, bags, trash pickers, road assignments um, can all be done there, but what would be really great is if you contact um, Allison or myself and we can work out a road assignment um, in advance for you um, and kind of get you set up that way. So this is a great event for all ages. It's actually a lot of fun. It's great exercise. It's great for the community. Um, we've removed about 2,000 pounds of trash each time. Um, and it would be really fantastic to set a record this year. I've noticed a lot of litter as the snow has melted, and um, oh, yeah. I just have to say, and there's, we have it, we found, Allison found this quote on Facebook from my dad, but he has always said there would be no greater gift for his birthday than if someone would just pick up a piece of trash, and so we've tried to honor that um, by doing this event, and there is a Facebook event um, for it as well, and we'll have some flyers and press releases, so everyone's welcome to participate, no matter where you live, bring your kids, um, it's just, it's a really great community event and really we really appreciate everyone that participates including the town that's a Friday and a Saturday Friday it's I did it's Friday April 12th at 9 a.m. Um, we usually go go until about noon although we welcome people no, to go later all, usually all day as oh, that the Fridays can, and then Saturday we do at nine we do at nine o'clock at Hannaford again um, and so it's it's Friday and Saturday cool April 12th, 12th and April 13th, 13th. And come for one day, come for both. Um, no. no, it's when we're really organized. Um, you Hanford find something on the side of the things. road, you're welcome to drink it. I mean, there's like an unopened can every now and yeah, then. Be, be careful, uh, <laughs> sir. You, nobody can hear you. So you, you might come up here and talk. It'd be fine. Can you, can you give us your name, please, for a few minutes. Just first name or last? Both. Ron Stasiowski. Thank you. Just moved to Camden recently. Okay. Living in. Mountainside Park, a great place for over 55 and above. I'm over 55. Welcome. As everybody can probably tell. Anyway, walking, I walked from the park to the bus barn. I found them doing, started to do a tutor thing for, it used to be called GED, but now it's, it's, you know, it's close. Adult Ed? Yeah, but it's, it's equivalent. It's a new name for a GED. Uh, I'm yeah, hoping going to help somebody with math because I'm here. a math counting major. I all did all that kind of stuff. So I met with Nancy Dickerson. Probably know her from the school. Mm -hmm. She was nice. But anyway, so on my walk along 52, all down is all oh, kinds of cans and of bottles worst. and plastic bags and all that. Now, yep. When it starts to dry up, I've been picking up some stuff Thank in the you. past. I know, because it's yeah. pretty steep going down well, in there. Well, not just that. Sometimes you don't want to pick some things up. Well, I wear gloves. I wear gloves and, yeah. you know, a few bags. But, yeah. but anyway, uh, does the town have anybody that goes along there? I don't want to so that's what we're interfering with say if the town's going to be picking up stuff because it's a state. No, no, we're all going to need collective effort. Everybody. It's a collective effort oh, with the litter yes. cleaning up, and, and my, that was sort of my dad's habit, was he'd walk around and pick yeah. up trash and stuff it in his pockets. It wasn't an organized effort. So we've right. in, made an effort to, um, con to consolidate it um, or to make it sort of an event. But everyone who wants to pick up litter, that's sort of the spirit that You're this is formed in. I've been doing so that for years, you. wherever we've that's been wonderful. living, you know, in the neighborhood right. especially. Right. And... Uh, I forgot the other question I had. 
Oh, so it's a state highway. They don't do that sort of thing anymore. They, they, they used do. to they have were, like some some, some, some from the way. from the prison they come do. by and drop them off, and they go. They do do some, but it's, it's not really pretty, it's very limited. Most of that is when we've called and asked and gotten a whole agreement, and we yeah. we pay for their lunches and right, Mar right, Marcy right. has organized a lot of interaction. Yeah. Yeah. So well, isn't that worth us. it for like Route 52 because it's pretty steep Taylor and, did and it's Route 52 last time. And it's and it's you have to be careful going down those steep banks and some places vests, so that's why i'm thinking signs and safety vests trash pickers signs we, yeah. we, that's where we do it it's a pretty good operation what, what was that what do you do i didn't get that we have a whole yeah. safety system taylor's a firefighter too so we send him okay. out on route 52 to oversee <laughs> sometimes but we put out the big signs and well, where do you put these and signs well, and how well, we follow yeah. all this if, you know if, you, but you don't have to do that we sometimes for some people we give them a very safe road assignment right and how do I go about doing that from come at nine, just come at nine o'clock on the 12th? Oh, so specifically those two days. So yes. you can go wherever yes. you want. Yes. Pretty much. Um, we and can, then you can coordinate with these two yeah. young ladies. They'll figure out a nice spot for you. Hopefully nice and grassy and flat. Great. Okay. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, John. Thank I, you very I much. I just want to ask, sir, I, think maybe I want to ask you one more question. How did you choose Camden as a place to come and live? I'm always curious. I mean, you know, <laughs> Camden. <laughs> Well, we lived in Noble Borough, right. and it was okay. a big old right. house that right. was okay, so from, from the area. kind of oh, falling okay. apart, right. so <laughs> we wanted it, we're scaling down, and that's Except hard John. to do. Got Another it. feeling. Thank, Thank you, John. Um, so, did, you, did you finish up with your... I think that's what I've got okay, for cool. now. <laughs> a couple of things A couple of things on the uh, stuck board uh, well, this, in this area. One was um, this tomorrow, no, I'm going to make it Tuesday. Thursday night is our last budget committee meeting night it ends up um, um, so um, one of the things we wanted to propose to do is have a workshop on Monday or Tuesday just to discuss the overall budget thing I know Mark's not going to be available but this is not for voting on the budget that's going to be another future select board meeting when we have to actually approve it send it forward to uh, for the town meeting but um, uh, are you are you all available Monday or Tuesday is either day better for you anybody or time of day Tuesday. better Tuesday time of day better or not I'm open both days. For how long is this? I'd say it'd be about an hour, an hour and a half. On Tuesday, the um, April second. Um, I think so. Okay. This is the one, normally the well, part of the meeting where we set our schedule, so no, I'm kind I'm, of not in the. Well, well, let's we'll tell you what. We'll, we'll just peg for now uh, April second at 10 a.m. Okay. And yep. then we can change it. Just, just want to kind of in your mind keep. Sometime in the morning on April 2nd. Okay. All right. Agenda, I guess. Was just like board reports. There's no oh, place on okay. it for a schedule. The other thing, segue to that, why we're doing this is, uh, which we haven't done it in the past as much, is because Audra is going to be going on a bit of vacation on August 4th. April. 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 So, <laughs> you not Sorry, going? Audra. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's a few months later. <laughs> when are you more too concerned? April 4th. You know. April 4th. Because she's, we want to make sure we, and she's going to be gone for a couple of weeks, so um, we want to make sure we. A couple, couple, three weeks. I didn't want to advertise it too much because somebody will steal all our stuff in our office. Oh, um, good point. But, but I'm just kidding. But, and that's a segue to the other item I wanted to, uh, Audra to address, and that is in her absence. Um, yes, so we'll, Jody Hansen, the finance director, will be the acting manager while I'm away. So all of my um, my my email will be set up so it's forwarded through to Jody, and it, it gives an out of office message to anybody who tries to get in touch with me. I'm going to be 15 time zones away, so hard to. So is that day? Yeah. 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 Yep. 15 yeah. time zones ahead. She's sleeping when we're awake, and we're sleeping when she's awake. So we're allowed to contact you, but or we'll if you're, if you're up in the middle of the night and have nothing else to do, you won't so bother me if you get in touch with me. No, never know. <laughs> so but I probably won't answer. <laughs> so you don't need to do anything. I feel like in the past, in all the boards that I've been on or witnessed, oftentimes there's like a, when during these periods. There ends up being confusion, or something comes up that so and so is not really authorized to. Do we need to do anything to officially authorize Jody to be like fill in for your role in Midco Solid Waste, for example? Or I don't. If we, 
No, no I just want to, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. I was very rude. No, or maybe you interrupted Audra. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't believe so. I think that, you know, we just appoint her as the acting and right. she'll have all my mm -hmm. signatory authority and... And I, we just want the public to know and also select board if you have any comments or issues, please bring them up now because that's what's going to happen as of April 4th. Is she going to be in your office? No, she'll stay in the, in her office. Okay. I do have one thing. April 4th is when you leave. Yep. Uh, it was confirmed today that the next EMS committee meeting for, um, Camden, Rockport, Lincolnville, and Hope will meet on the 4th, the evening of the 4th. Oh, and hopefully there. we will be able to extend our contract with Northeast that that evening and and make that official. So great. looking forward April to April 4th. April 4th. Thank you very and much. We're still looking for a place to hold it because there is a meeting. It's supposed to be in Rockport. There is a meeting being held there, so we're looking for. Well, I think they confirmed that it will be here in the front room. Yes. It should be. I mean, to move. Yeah. planning board that night, I believe. Oh, okay. So then we go. There you go. Yeah. There you go. All right. With that, uh, that's the end of select board reports, I believe. Unless you want to add anything else, Audra. Um, um, I had a, a couple small things. So um, we are diligently plugging away at the um, right of way work for the Washington Street sidewalk project. We've just engaged Fred Bucklin as the appraiser because that's the next piece of all of this. We need to have appraisal work done on a number of properties that we need to acquire, both construction easements and, um, you know, just easements for the sidewalk itself on. Um, there's very few appraisers in the state who are certified by MDOT. So they said, if you can find one that's available that meets our criteria, then go ahead and just engage them. So that's why we've engaged Fred. Um, so he's going to be starting his appraisal work very shortly. He's been waiting for the snow to melt so he could see everything that he needs to be looking at. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the important next step in getting that work done. We've met with um, MDOT staff about it and we're all pretty much on the same page as to you know what we're doing, where we need to be. They've decided that um, they definitely want to bid out this project at the same time they rebid the Route 1 South sidewalk project. So. It's, we're really gonna try hard to get all of this right-of-way work done so everything is ready to be bid out in the fall. Great, thank you, Audra. Um, on item three, which is approval of the minutes, they're not in the packet, so that will also be tabled as an agenda item. Make a motion that we table the minutes. Second. March 12th. All those in favor? Second. Okay. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, we have four items in the consent agenda tonight. They are improve, approval of a renewal of virtual license for Camden House of Pizza, 12 Mechanic Street, approval of the renewal of a victual license for victual layer license for rum, rum line at one Wayfair Drive, and approval of the renewal license agreement, which, which basically is a one-year extension with Side Country Sports. And fourth is the village approval of the village green application for Bay Chamber concerts to be held on August 14th and 15th. Are there any objections to the consent agenda items? No. Not hearing any, then the four items are hereby adopted. Going to item five, which is another fun one, it was a presentation by the Ragged Mountain Ski Club. Yay! <laughs> Come on up, please. I think it's a good idea. Because I've heard you don't know enough about it. We don't. Okay. So I brought some notes to keep me straight. So my name is Wendy Zwecker. I have a little bit of a cold, but I'm the president of the Ragged Mountain Ski Club. Welcome, Wendy. Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to talk about who we are. We're a nonprofit group. Um, the board is made up of eight volunteers. Three of them are Camden residents. The rest of us are Rockport, Owl's Head, what have you. Um, and we have 133 members this year. Um, and that's grown steadily since 2014 for the Ragged Mountain Ski Club. But essentially, this was a group that started in the 1980s as a group trying to raise funds to start a race program in this area by a group of um, parents who wanted their kids to race and there wasn't the facilities to do it. So they started raising funds to support these kids and to get like certified um, to have races here. 
But what's evolved is we've grown to raise money to support the Camden Snow Bowl through various aspects that they do. Um, we assist with a race program. Um, we do lids for kids so that kids have safe helmets on their heads. Um, we do the fourth grade learn to ski program. We do programming, we do scholarships, we raise a lot of money. We try to raise a lot of money so we can offset some of their expenses. And it's been fabulous to work with Beth and Holly, um, the maintenance crew, the store. It's like everyone is really, really receptive to work with us because essentially we're trying to raise all this money and try to have, um, give the members some fun things back which didn't used to happen before. Um, and we really want to support the mountain because we have the mountain here. We are very, very fortunate to have a mountain that people can tap into and utilize if that's their thing. And so we want to make that thing for those people that want to do it. Some people like dance, some people like art, some people want to ski. We want, to, we want them to ski. Um, so we've been building up our membership program as a base to grant some funds. And with the members, we do all kinds of things. We give them all kinds of perks. We've sided with Side Country Sports. Um, to give them discounts for members. We've worked with Flatbread Pizza. Um, we work with a lot of different people. And what we do is we also do a preseason discount ski trip for our members up to Sugarloaf when the mountain's not, in, not working. We stopped doing our postseason ski trip for members because we ultimately want to support the camp in Snowball. And so the people need to stay here as long as we can through March and as long as we can keep that mountain running. Um, we do like pancake breakfasts um, in October, which you probably went to because that's, oh a, my God. that's a, it's all Sundays for the month of October. And with that, the snowball has been really, really great because one of the membership things that we do is we give free chairlift rides to Ragged Mountain Ski Club members, so you should become a member. <laughs> So some of the other things that we do is in October, we do sponsor the pancake breakfast. We had five of them this year. Um, we do a preseason party for all the members. So we give hot dogs, hamburgers. We had a band. It's usually really fun. We postponed it this year. November, we hold a big auction at the Waterfront Restaurant that raises lots of money um, for the fourth grade learn to ski program, for coaches needs, all of these types of things. December, we host a preseason ski trip um, to Sugarloaf. In January of this year, we hosted a family fun race for Izzy Manahan, who was a really dedicated ski racer in the community, a great family. She died tragically last summer. Um, so we had tutus, we had lays, um, we had golden tickets, we had an obstacle course on the mountain, another obstacle course if you want to do it. Um, and we had hot dogs and hamburgers that we gave to all members. So it was a fun way to get people onto the mountain because that's really what we want to do. We want to bring the community together in a fun way on the mountain. Um, Question? Yep. How do you become a member? So at the Pancake Breakfast, we do have membership cards and stuff that you can sign up right there to become a member. And I think well, comfortably you are part of that. So you can get it there. Um, online, we have had the form before, but typically it's through these different events that you'll see the membership form. Or you can email me directly. A lot of people do that as well. Um, and they're like the, at the auction and all these types of things, you get it. And once you're a member, you get insights into all these events that we host because we host a lot of events and you should come to them. Um, we also supported a girls' tuning night. It's the second year in a row that we've done that, and that was in January. Side Country aligned themselves with us. We're teaching young girls how to care for their skis, um, and then we feed them and do all these fun things. January through March, we provided cocoa and marshmallows for all racers because it's Friday night racing at the Snowball. So we wanted to have cocoa and everything there in a fire pit to make everyone comfortable and happy. And then we do flatbread preets on Friday nights as well. Um, and this year, again, we raise all this money for the Lids for Kids, for the fourth grade Learn to Ski, and that program also, it supports 14 different schools in the community, which we want that to grow, because again, it takes one kid to want this one thing and to get them off their computer devices and to get them outside and doing something that's really helpful and healthy for them. Um, so we sent letters home with all the fourth grade and fifth grade families this year to talk about the Ragged Mountain Ski Club as well as for scholarships, because we want to support a lot of these kids and what they want to do. Um, and we also want to put this information into local letters. We do give a lot of money to scholarships. We want to give more money for families for scholarships. This year we supported 18 families. Um, a, seven other families qualified, but they didn't redeem it. Anytime someone asks to have a scholarship, we ask that they give a little bit towards it so that there's some skin in the game. Um, and then we also use them as a volunteer base for some of these events that we support. Um, and next year, Oh, and we also worked with the schools locally to make sure we can identify students who weren't filling out these scholarship forms so that the nurses and the teachers could tell us who would benefit from something like this within their own household. 
Um, and we want to grow that program a lot more. We want to take these fourth graders that are doing the fourth grade learn to ski program, and we want to help them in fifth grade. We want to help them in sixth grade. We want to help them in seventh grade. If that's what they need, we want to help them. So we have increased our scholarship member, um, our monies towards that to, to 10,000. We want to give like $10,000 worth of money to kids if they need it. We want to help them. Um, and again, some of this money goes to coaching needs. We've subsidized the middle school Nordic ski program this year. Um, we've done race equipment. We've done a lot of things. Um, next year, we want to build a scholarship program. We want to start with lessons for kids that don't have that opportunity. We want to integrate them into programs, whether it's freestyle, racing, whatever it is. We want to integrate them into that. We want to upgrade to the passes. And eventually, we want them to be a steward of the mountain or a supporter of the mountain. We just want to grow their love for what we have right in front of us. And we have to start with them when they're really young. Um, we want to do a lot of outreach with the community. You guys were great this year, how you supported that Wednesdays for the Camden residents. We want to take it a step further. We want to support, we want to have ski clinics for any of the towns that support the fourth grade learn to ski program, we want to bring in adults. Like if you haven't skied, you want to try, come on in. Because ultimately, you'll have a believer in the program. You'll have a believer in the mountain outside of the ski season. You'll have a believer that wants to hike, that wants to bike. So we want to create that through our endeavors. Um, we also want to support the coaches more at the mountain. They do a lot of good stuff. And you guys are really lucky to have this coaching base. And so if it doesn't fit in the budget for what can happen for the coaches, we want to support them in a way that the Camden Snow Bowl and their budget or the town can't. Um, we also want to get a shed on the mountain for the Ragged Mountain Ski Club so we can actually store our stuff in our own space. Um, and we want to have more small fun perks for the mountain and continue doing what we've been doing. So as a result of all of our efforts and the result of what we want to give back, we do have a check this year for $19,023 for the Camden Snowball. Wow. Cheese. <laughs> and do you have any questions? Because I didn't really, you guys didn't really know what the Ragged Mountain Ski Club did. That's a really polite way to start. Thank you, Wendy. You worked so hard all year round. Yeah, that was so I didn't, I didn't realize the extent of all of it, even though I think we are members, but um, we have t-shirts at home, I know that. Some of you others Tell me again, how do you become a member? Make sure that everybody knows that's watching this. You can come any Sunday when we do the pancake breakfast, and that's really where our that's, big that's base. How that we is become huge. members. That's how we get a majority of our members, um, because we'll have the forums right then. And we also, last year, which, which we're really sad to see go away, and I'm going to totally take advantage of this platform to do it, um, but last year, when people bought their membership, their um, ski passes for the season, you could buy your membership online. So last year, we actually had 187 members, and that did go down to 133 without that that little extra opportunity um, because when you're when you're in a point of sale site if you can add your things to that it just makes sense to have it all right there so that did go away this year we were really sad to see that happen but it made it really easy for people to get membership that way and why did that go away <laughs> Or if this is, is this like a really controversial topic or something? <laughs> maybe the question, I, you read, it should come from the source. Maybe the question is, how can we have it come back? Or maybe we need maybe to know. Great. I don't so, know. Uh, maybe there's a good reason. I think there was a reason because we switched the credit card processing. We were eating all their processing. Uh, oh, so there was a little bit of conflict well, of interest there, possibly. Sure, I'm, I'm not sure. sure. But when we switched sure. over to the new credit card, that's when we were like, well, our we could we could go back to it because we are putting the processing on customer, the customer. Right. So oh, the cost of the processing. Yes. I see. Yes. I see. So that's why. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So it would so cost it could them be more. Visited. Yeah. Yo, thank you, Wendy. You're welcome. Thank Great you. presentation. Thank, thank you. you. Do. Don't forget that we want the check. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, next on our agenda is a, a, a public hearing for four applications. Uh, the procedure for holding a public hearing is um, to, get, to give the public a chance to comment on any of the applications. Uh, please, we ask any speaker from the public uh, to uh, come to the speak uh, to the microphone to give the name and uh, make a brief comment on any application. After all the public has spoken or uh, wants to speak has spoken, I will close the public discussion and revert to the select board for, for action, discussion and action on each of the applications. Please keep your comments brief. Um, no outbursts, no applause. We're trying to get some business done here. So 
Uh, but <laughs> with all that said, um, <laughs> unless it's applause for us, then it's allowed. But um, uh, the uh, the first application we have is for. Well, actually, we're going to take the first two as a batch because it's for the same entity. It's the application of the Port Clyde Seafood Company doing business as Rumline at one Wayfarer Drive for the renewal of a Class 1 restaurant liquor license and also for the same entity, uh, Port Clyde Seafood Company, doing business as Rumline at one Wayfarer Drive for a special amusement permit. Is there anybody from the public who would like to comment for, against, or just to comment on any of uh, either of these two? Or in those, I don't see any hands, so on those on those two, I will close the public hearing portion and revert to the select board. Are there any comments from select board members? No. I uh, make a, oh. Please do. I would make a motion. Would you want two motions or one for both? I think the same company with, uh, with two licenses. Okay. I would make a motion that we approve the application of the Port Clyde Seafood Company doing business as Rumline. Uh, for a renewal of a Class 1 restaurant liquor license and also approve the application um, of the same company for a special amusement permit. Second. Any comments? All those in favor? Good. The uh, third uh, one is an application from John McCluskey doing business as the Camden House of Pizza, 12 Mechanic Street for a renewal Class 1 restaurant liquor license. Is there anybody from the public who would like to speak to this application? for, against, or in between. No hands, I will close public comment, revert to select board comments, if any. I will make a motion that we approve the application of John McCluskey doing business as Camden House of Pizza uh, for a renewal of a class one restaurant liquor license. Discussion, I'm sorry, you won't get him. <laughs> Discussion? No. All in favor, five zero, thank you very much. <laughs> Lastly is, but not least, is the uh, application of the Camden Harbor Cruises at one public landing for the renewal vessel liquor license cruises. Any comments from the public? You got to say something, Dominic. You want, time. Yeah, sure. Sorry. Introduce yourself to the public and tell us what you're doing. Hey, I'm Dominic. Uh, my wife and I own Camden Harbor Cruises, the vessel Lively Lady. Um, we, a lot of times people hear that we have, we serve beer and wine on board and say, oh, you guys do booze cruises. No, we do not do booze cruises. Uh, it's kind of an amenity thing. You know, parents are on vacation, their kids are enjoying the lobstering, they get to have a glass of wine, maybe relax for 20 minutes on vacation. But that's kind of really more well, less tell us, what it is. Tell us more about the boat and what the cruise entails. Uh, well, it's a 40-foot wooden lobster boat. Uh, built up Bass Harbor, and uh, we just do eco tours, seal watches, lobstering trips, um, lighthouse cruises, pretty popular. But uh, yeah, it's uh, more, it's a real educational cruise, and we give a full narrated tour. So we have a tour guide on board, or a naturalist with a microphone, and it's, uh, Thank you, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Thank you. But it's not a booze cruise. I understood. <laughs> Say hi to do you take requests too, or do you just have your program yep. that you? Yeah, yeah, we do, well we do private charters. Stuff like that. So there's, there's been, uh, I think, probably the closest thing we've had to a booze cruise was Pop Tech. They charted oh. it on their last <laughs> night. <laughs> that, that was fun. But uh, other than that, it's pretty Thanks, Dominic. Say but hi to you. Liz. Um, if there are no other comments from the public, I'll close the public hearing and revert to the select board. Any comments to the select board? I will make a motion that we approve the application of Camden Harbor Cruises, uh, one public landing for a renewal vessel liquor license cruises. Uh, second. All those in favor? Five zero. Yeah. With that, we will close the public hearing and revert to the, uh, congratulations, Tom, and, uh, revert to the agenda, which is item seven, and basically just the uh, approval to schedule four items, uh, ordinance de uh, development, uh, to public hearing at the select board for April 9th, as I recall, is the correct? Yeah, April 9th, correct? And they would be the zoning ordinance for marijuana cultivation, zoning ordinance for formula based foods businesses, food sovereignty, and the clean communities ordinances, which will be, uh, again, what we're doing is announcing it. By the way, three of those went through planning board approval, if I'm not correct, is that right? Only two. two. Only two, two needed two, to, two, the two, marijuana right. cultivation and uh, formula-based food. I can give you a summary if you'd like. If not, we can... Um, the select board so desires, I think they're all pretty familiar with all four. Um, yeah. um, 
Uh, I'll probably do that on April 9th. Are uh, you guaranteed? That would be <laughs> guaranteed. <laughs> so do I hear a motion to move those uh, forward? I make a motion to schedule the public hearings for ordinance amendments for A, the zoning ordinance for marijuana cultivation, B, the zoning ordinance for formula-based food businesses, uh, food sovereignty, C, and D, clean communities. Second. Any discussion? I heard, I heard you making sound, yes. so. Um, so remind me again of the rule. So if we're in this limbo stage now where if somebody saw like a little thing, like a typo or wanted to change, for example, on the clean community ordinance, I think that it might need one more check on whether we've set up the waiver fee system in a way that works for Randy. Um, yes. I'd like to see if we can set it so that the, like the select board would set the waiver fee annually. I believe the or version that you emailed me today. So. My apologies for this. The version that's in your packet is slightly different than right. the final version that Allison worked on, which is mostly yeah, differences not, in the waiver fees. That's not you needing to apologize. But we won't go to, excuse me, Allison, but we won't go to um, actual uh, publication of it the seven days prior to the April 9th. Uh, Right, you still, so we still have time for like the clean community or getting the correct version out there and publicizing that so that when you go to like the actual public hearing in April, mm -hmm. it'll be the correct version. E exactly, right. yeah. So yep. when do we have until it needs to be? Really when Janice advertises, which is? Seven days before April 9th? Ten? You Ten said days prior? this was the last Ten meeting days. where we could set. A public okay. hearing. It is. Okay, right. Yes. To get it to, to get so, it to June. to get it to the uh, uh, secret yeah. ballot. Because right. okay. that's the next meeting you have is April 9th. Right. So I just want to make sure, though, that everybody's in agreement. I didn't make massive changes. The Conservation Commission um, reviewed this, and so I um, put their comments in um, in a way that hopefully is acceptable to Bill. They wanted to make it clear that the town is also required to follow the ordinance. Um, and that I think is we lovely okay. um, and a good thing. And then we also I discussed this with, with them too, but I'm not sure if we discussed it here. So we added in a component about the Sorry. balloons that if you for stores that mm -hmm. give them out or sell them, they have to be individually weighted um, if the ordinance passes. So this would ban the intentional release of any balloon, um, but also require stores to. Mm have a little a weight on yeah, each of them, so, it, which is but, a common thing. But to answer your first question about what the, the exact date for to give the seven days, I think she has until April 1st. I think you have until April 1st, but I'm going to, we'll verify with Janice tomorrow exactly. morning first. on the exact Regardless, date. you do have enough time, like it's it's okay if everybody in principle is okay with the changes Correct. that Allison's described. Yes. Mm -hmm. We can make sure that that's the version that Okay. I just want to make advertised. sure we've done it like it, with Randy and whether. Yes. Yeah, yeah and we'll have enough time to the, run it by Randy and run it by Bill Kelly. Kind of this week. Yes. Right. I mean, it's really like a couple of days. It's not. Correct. It shouldn't be like, oh, we've got plenty of time. No, we, we have like don't. we got like two days, three, two, right. three, three working days. days, three count calendar uh, week, weekday working days, okay. uh, because it really should by the first kind of because it's going to be done by the second. On Friday, yeah, probably. yeah, you get, you're getting oh, tight because be it should also be five uh, working days, not five count seven count seven. Days. Days, so I think the first, we should peg in the first, done by the first. We'll, we'll make sure it's done. All right, cool. And then the food sovereignty ordinance, another small thing. Um, mm -hmm. I personally um, would like that it to reference, um, at the beginning it says, this ordin ordinance is enacted pursuant to title, blah, 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 of the, the Maine Food Sovereignty Act. Yep. Um, I would like it to also reference uh, home rule authority because I don't want the implication to be that towns didn't have the right to do this without passing the Maine Food Sovereignty Act. I just that makes sense. think it's better if we Jeremy. continue to reassert. This is common language that goes in. We actually have it in other parts of our, of our ordinance. Um, I mean, we're only granted it because the state has waived the requirements. Lots of towns did this before, so I want to stand in solidarity with the towns that were brave enough to go first. And it's a really, sm I mean, it's a small little it's thing. Not actually right. taking much of a stand, but no, it's not. Um, Anything else? Yeah, just a quick thing. Um, 
the required message on this. The producer and or processor shall provide notice to patrons stating the following. Um, this food was prepared and processed in a residential kitchen or farm-based kitchen. I don't... Do we need to... The idea of this was that they would... I mean, we could probably just sit and scratch that whole thing and just say the producer and the processor shall provide notice to patrons stating the following. And... It was the stating the following, the dictating the uh, exact language, because I think that I'm not sure that this food was prepared and processed in a residential kitchen or farm-based kitchen. Right. Actually Means gets the... Point across. The point across. I think the point is that people should know that it's you know an unlicensed right. kitchen or that right. it's and I think that's probably should be it just leave that and just say an unlicensed kitchen and then the other thing is though that some there are all these different levels of licensing for kitchens mm -hmm. so when I started there the cottage food rules and this and that so it's possible that your kitchen could be licensed for this but not for this or right. I just is it I'm wondering if there's a way that I can just phrase this um, provide a little bit of flexibility in the in the required disclosure this but food was prepared and processed consistent with the Maine Food Sovereignty Act actually except for that sure. definition thing um, but I can't remember what we had in the first version of this but it seemed Possibly preferable. Would that be something that the select board would? I don't think you liked the first version of it. Well, not the first version, oh. but the, oh, okay. the, the middle ground the, <clears throat> What do you think, Jenna? I, I think that I'm concerned um, because the residential kitchen and farm-based kitchen are definitions that we came up with for this right, ordinance no, for just the sake of this, but I don't know they mean anything to the general public. Or if it's I feel like it, it gets it's the with point the Maine Food Sovereignty it. Act. I I I like that if that feels like that's an if it's that's conveying enough information um i don't have a personal issue with residential or farm-based kitchen i think that covers the bases without saying hey this is you know red flag like kind of thing that, i think if you put um, if you say unlicensed it just creates this it may and, create and an like odd allison makes a great point by saying that commercial kitchens can be licensed at very different levels and for very different products um and so i think to say a residential or farm-based kitchen. kitchen. I works yeah, I think that works. Okay. Okay. What if we leave that in and say kitchen consistent room. with the Maine Food Sovereignty Act? I think Act. that's actually perfect in my opinion. I would rather. I'd like to keep yeah. that in there. Cool. I think that gives. All right. I'm just a little nervous a little about stand. that definition thing. What? You know, definition the, thing. I don't want to remind you of the fact, but well. the, 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 the at the site of production. <laughs> Why don't we? Uh, I don't overemphasize that we're being bold, but. Um, being bold. Okay. I think you think it's okay? I think it's but, okay. But I just, okay. I'd rather I not say an unlicensed definition, kitchen. I really, but are so, we then bound by their definition of? Right. We are bound by their definitions no matter what until the state legislature changes. And we had an email from Craig Hickman because mm -hmm. we reached out to him and from the legislature on this specific. Hickman. He's the um, state rep. Yeah. Who has been leading this charge for, long, um, for a while? For a while. Yeah. He's the guy, the guy from farmer from Winthrop. Mm -hmm. um, he's the one that's pushing Maine food sovereignty. And so we asked a specific question about the legislative intent on where, because if you go mm -hmm. go back to my little memo that I had and why I tweaked this a little bit, is because the state hasn't changed their the law on this, and so you're really only allowed to sell it from where it is produced. Oh, so you put that in ours too? Yes, it's in there, Allison. Um, I look, I, I, Allison, we can't do things that are go against state law when it comes to Maine food sovereignty. We can't do things against state law generally. So in Hickman's, Hickman, I, in my understanding, they are working on a change because that was not their legislative intent. That's a, exactly. It's not in the bill. It's in... It's in the law that's codified in the legislature. Mm -hmm. I mean, in and the you're law. You're forcing people to go into the neighborhoods to... I, I'm not forcing them to do that. The legislature did when they approved it, when they passed this. We changed our definition of... We did. You know, and that was uh, that was in my in the email that I sent when I sent this around mm -hmm. and, and said, hey, this is this is my revised version. I tweaked it a little bit to, so stay, many revisions that, I know, I know. to stay consistent with state law. I mean, right now we have... 
we cannot. All right. Well, a producer cannot today go well, we just to a farmer's so market. Much, I, yeah. So many towns have passed it the other way. Um, Pursuant to this, it's a whole home rule authority situation. I mean, it's exact conversation we had multiple times that other towns have, very few towns have actually gone with that restrictive definition. Rockland has it. I, Northport yeah. has it. I, I mean, I, I know. Yeah, I, um, I, I think, well, first of all, I, but I, I yeah, think yeah. there is going to be legislative changes on this. And, and what my intent was to do something that is consistent with state law on it. And then when the law changes, right. it's very easy for us to change it. it I, I mean, I don't, how can we come up with an ordinance that says if state law says, and the Maine Food Sovereignty Act says, it has to be sold at the location where it's produced. Right. And then we're, we decide, well, that wasn't the legislative intent. That is not our place to say what the legislative intent was. If the legislature wants to change the bill because, or the law because they blew it, or the or the analysts that were writing this based on what the legislature what what they discussed, then they should change it. And the legislature did not change that. I, I mean, I hear what you're saying, and I appreciate it, but if you, I mean, we, yeah, we've had this conversation a ton. That's the whole home rule authority part of it. That's the fact. The majority of towns have passed the ordinance without the at the site of production that part of the definition. And that's the whole idea of I, home rule authority. I, I, I would just say that the Maine Food Sovereignty Act allows us to do this, not home rule authority. I mean, and I know, but you, you and I talked about has this. this has the state confirmed this language is, is, is required? To you, the the state honestly, the state will say I have reached out to the Department of Agriculture, reached out to to Health and Human Services that do food inspections, and they say, "Ha, ah, sorry, we're not going to comment. We're not going to give you any guidance. We're not going to give you any comment on it." Let's see. That's what the state does, and so all that we have going for us is, I mean, there is a group of people, uh, farmers, engaged people that are into the local food right. world right. that have come up with model ordinances and are trying to push something that's different than the, what's in the Maine Food Sovereignty Act, which is fine. And I think I understand where they're going. But that said, the law is the law. Whether or not that was the intent, what the legislature did, it went through the legal analysts. They crafted the bill. Mm -hmm. And it says specifically in the bill that it needs to be sold where it's located. So if we were to do what we're doing where it is right now, things change in the future, we can change along with oh, it. Of course. Absolutely. Of course. I mean, absolutely. And I'd love to be able to say, yeah, let's include it. But I mean, how do you include something that the that law doesn't true. allow you to do, even though it might be the legislative intent? Let's take it a step at a time and get this done, and then we can we can move on. That's, my, have the that's my feeling on it. But. Home rule authority allows us to do it. And most of the other towns have, the, what there are, how many towns have passed this ordinance so far? 46 or yeah, something. And the vast majority of them have passed it using the model ordinance that was based off of the bill and not by, by weeding through into the state definitions and being like, oh, there's this little part that, I mean, we're taking an extra conservative approach when you can. We are, certainly are in the grand scheme of the state. I can definitely, but I'm not arguing that the law. I can, I'm just. Mm -hmm. Agreeing with what is fact. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> nobody's well. going to sue us for it's. <laughs> well, but I mean, Jeremy's job is to bring you something that's consistent with the law as he interprets it, and you can choose to do things. This wouldn't be the first time you've chosen to do something True. contrary to True. certain advice you've gotten because you've weighed the risk and the benefit, and you've decided that it was worth it. So. That's kind of, I think, the situation that you're in right now. It's almost like I, a typo situation in that, like, when they actually went to write the, the definitions, that got put in there. And the state's not even out there saying, oh, you need to put that. You need to make sure that goes in your ordinance. It's just us. It's being, it's being si silly, I think. I, I agree that it's Jeremy's job to present all the icebergs to us, the, um, the just ball, like Bill Kelly. The ball, but, is, the ball is in our court. Yes. The ball is in our court. So if we want to... As Audrey just said, absolutely, we want to go in a, to uh, in the different language. That's what we have to propose. Now, the good news is we have a couple of days to do that before we, before do. we have to publish this thing. So uh, that's the decision we, we can make as a select board if we decide to go that route. I mean, just remove and where the local food product is produced from the 
number two definition. We'd be like towns like Appleton, which have had this on their books since when, Jenna? When did this? Like in right, Appleton, right. probably but 2011. I thought, I thought food sovereignty was so people could sell things in their front porch. That's um, the that was the idea no. originally. But if you if you make a birthday cake and you want to if you want to pass it off when you meet somebody. Like or, do, or deliver it. Right. Exactly. For me. And I was like, uh -huh. I'll just bring him to the select board and give me money, select board meeting and give me money there. Who's going to sue you? Exactly. So, so either way, who's so going to sue you? Right. Demanding that it be, the whole point of this is to let people do what they want to do. So demanding in our definition that, oh, and where it was produced, sorry, Bob, got to come to my house to pick up your cookies. If Bob says, hey, I'd like two dozen eggs, can you bring them to me at the meeting tonight? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you no, know, I, I think you're, you know, we're stretching the ruling versus actual oh, life. Because right. if they're not going to sue us for having different language, they're not going to sue anybody for dropping the eggs off here. I'm sorry. You're right. getting, getting a little bit legal. Just take it out. Yeah, whatever. I'm just saying, either way, I, I personally wouldn't worry about it at all. Yeah. That's where I feel. I feel that this is well. There's a good precedent for this. Did you have a comment? I'm not going to question. Um, okay, Eleanor Mason Peters, and I just wondered if this overlaps with um, when people wanted to produce meals in their house and have people pick it up. We went through that last year or the year before. Mm. Does that get mixed in there? I can help answer. Okay. I think maybe. Okay. maybe no. Jonas, you could could too. <coughs> um, so this is for producing of food, and it, it can be anything other than meat and poultry products. So if someone is going to be making, someone wants to make you veggie lasagna mm -hmm. and sell it to you, they can. Out of the house. House or possibly delivering it to you. So that negates that you talked about when they wanted to have that kitchen. Yeah. They don't have to comply with restaurant rules, correct? Right. So the health inspection? The health inspection, the state would not do any inspections of any of those facilities in the town. So is there a limit to how many meals they can produce? How many no. cost? Not under, not under main food, food sovereignty. Um, no, not for no. any consumption on premise. Right, you can't consume it on premise, but you could prep it in your house, prepare it and produce it in your house, yes. But so not, is that, is but that no. What, I'm not sure because I thought we all were in agreement that that shouldn't be done here. That was a state. We all. That was a state thing. I don't think there was. Well, first of all, that was, and I don't. Yeah. So this is, you know, 46 towns have passed a food sovereignty ordinance, which allows people to sell directly to their neighbors. Um, and well, they say neighbors, but it's anyone in, they sell in your community. Right. You can't take this, I can't grow something, produce something here and take it to Appleton and sell it. Right. And I think it should be noted that it's not just little towns on the, Augusta has passed this, um, Blue Hill, some fairly significant towns with restaurants with, and you know, I hear where you're coming from. I know your family's in the restaurant business. I know how all of this kind of controversy was, was but this is really, um, to me, it's about farmers and producers, and it it tends to be applied that way um, in the eight to ten years that um, that towns have been passing this. I was at a rally in Blue Hill in 2010 or 11 about it um, with Farmer Brown, but it really, I, I mean, yes, it would allow that. Um, it would just like it would allow someone to bake a birthday cake for you and you have um, have you pick it up at their house, but it or make relish. Right, right, make pickles, um, right. you know, and, and sell, sell them at you. their farm stand. Okay, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Eleanor, you don't have to ask you to come up here. Nobody can hear you if you're at home, if you're talking over there. I'm sorry. Good exercise, though, huh? So we could produce, we live right on Union Street. We could produce food meals for people to take out. As long as there's no meat, no meat. or poultry. Okay. That's easy. <laughs> and, and you tell people that it wasn't produced in a... And we could have as many people come in as we want. Well, that's where if... Uh, do you have to be in a B2 zone? Do you have no, to be in a I commercial zone? A yeah, please. There's a, there's a little... Good question. Uh, yeah, so all... 
Too the main food sovereignty was really about licensing, about state licensing of kitchens. That's what this is about, and that's what food sovereignty is about. It's about the licensing of them. It has nothing to do with zoning. It has nothing to do with land use. It's just they're two separate animals. Okay. So it doesn't. But the, one of the key yeah. things one, is. One at a time, please. Uh, Allison, you were first. Go ahead. I was waiting for Chair. Are you going to oh, go into more of that? Or we... I was going to try to leave it there. Um, right. <laughs> I mean, because the, you know, I mean, a lot of a lot of what our office deals with, the code office deals with, are complaint based issues. And so the reality is, is we may not know if someone is selling baking five cakes right. a week or five cakes a month, um, and they may be just doing it, and it, you know, no one has any issue with it. Um, we may never know about it. Um, at the same time, if someone on, you know, Pearl Street or Park Street is doing this and they're actually all of a sudden there's a hundred people coming to their house every day for muffins, then that becomes, that, that will become a zoning issue. I mean, there's no question. Oh, after the fact. <clears throat> What's that? After the fact, I mean, lots of things are after the fact. I mean, the reality is, is that if we, if the town passes this, this deals with licensing and allows people to open kitchens unlicensed by the state. That's what this does. It does not waive any zoning or land use requirements. Right. It does not do that. Right. It's still in conflict with the state because they have such strict requirements. Yeah. It seems like it's in conflict with the state because they have very strict requirements. Thanks, Eleanor. My daughter used to sell bread out of her house, uh -huh. and they came. It was a very basic. State came? Um, it was the Department of Agriculture, Agriculture. The right? But they do come, and it's not. They're not very strict, <laughs> oh. but they just want to make sure that what you say you're doing, sure. you're doing, mm -hmm. and that you have the equipment to do it, and it's safe and fireproof, and I mean all the things that are required by restaurants to do for the public. Lot. Food poisoning. Um, you could get into all kinds of things, mm -hmm. you know, inspections for that. Mm -hmm. So if you are allowed to just, I mean, I understand people having a farm stand <laughs> and wanting to sell their product and making jam, but now if you're opening the door and you're saying, well, if it, it's okay, I mean, there are people who are going to take advantage of that and it's going to change. And then you're going to have other issues about all that. Are you worried so I'm more not from a sure. public health standpoint or from a, like, unfairness standpoint? Well, from all parts of it. <coughs> because I think there is something to be said for um, having inspections for sanitary conditions, you know, even if you're just making jam. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, a lot of people just go into things and they don't really know. They don't take a sanitation course. Right. And I think this Even is people in restaurants don't. Sort so. of about being allowed to take that risk. You know, just like when I go over to anybody's house or when I buy something at a bake sale, I'm, exactly. you know, allowed to take that risk. I Sometimes I say, mm, you know what, I am not going to have, you know, what you're offering me or I'm not going to buy that. But um, it's about, like, that's a choice that I should be able to make and that each individual person should be able to make. And that's why we added, you know, the state passed a law that allows communities to do this. Um, one thing that they didn't include was anything about disclosures. We felt it was important that, okay, if people are going to do this, they need to be letting the public know through either a sign or a sticker or something that this this food hasn't gone through any of those things. Um, I put milk off a stand and gotten sick from it. So are you saying, well, that's your your problem? Or We're I don't saying know. you should have the right to be able to do yeah. that. I mean, people get sick from food that they eat at restaurants they're all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Too. Yeah. So, sure but they're responsible. It. Restaurants become responsible sure for that. It. I think if you're on a farm stand, nobody's going to really right. take on that responsibility. Well, one thing that the state has said is that if for instances of that where if, if people are getting sick that they would handle that in exactly the same way that they handle it now um, which is you know they would go and investigate and do what they yeah. what they yeah. do it doesn't they don't only investigate and follow up when it's you know that it's a complaint about a, a restaurant they would do it for Mark, um, you have a question? Yeah. 
Okay. So you're saying that if I live in a residential zone, I can produce food and sell it out of my house, mm -hmm. and that's all legal by the state mm -hmm. and by mm -hmm. the community? As, as long as there is no um, meat or poultry product involved. Right. You can't even use beef stock. If right. you want to make veggie soup and you want to use beef stock, that right. does not work. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, uh, okay. Is, is it clear on where the food is consumed? Where the food is consumed? They can't eat it there. Is that what um, you're saying? They can't be a these restaurant. These are producers, so we didn't go down that road of defining that. Of defining that. No, no. Well, we define what a, our zoning ordinance defines what a restaurant is, uh, and that's so true. That's, that's true. what you that's need a license. True. As that's soon true. as you get into consumption on premises, then right. But you could do food to go. I just think you're opening a big door. <laughs> Well, I, it's, it's a I, big, big well, door. Well established. It's a, you know, it's the same. We already gone through this a couple of years ago, and we said, no, we don't want that here. Well, it wasn't. Well, we I think some people didn't want other people to, to do it, way. but it was not allowed, and so right. it was shut down, just like when somebody has a sign that doesn't comply with the sign ordinance, and we get enough complaints, and, and does that mean that all of Camden just really can't tolerate? And and I think the one that we're speaking of that happened a few years ago was actually meat and poultry products were being sold. Right. right. And it was mm -hmm. not, it was cooked right. in one place and then. And then. Well, I want to get into a public hearing on it now, but, yeah. but I wanted to resolve the, the, equi the question we brought up about this um, state regulation mm -hmm. thing. Uh -huh. And I think we did, that needs to be clarified. That's more important. Because uh, Eleanor, great comments, and I agree with many of them you just made, but. That's going to be discussion with public hearing in two weeks. Okay. Uh, but and, and, and I just address one thing that absolutely, that, that, absolutely. She, said, that she asked about um, sure. that we're opening this up. I, I mean, I guess when you think about it, allowing people to do this is opening it up. But when I talk to the people in Rockland, I think there's one right. person that has taken advantage of this in Rockland. One. And in Augusta, is my understanding, is one person since they did this. I see. Um, and it was a farmer at the time. Sure. Um, and I know it's relatively new still in Augusta, but just one person is taking advantage of this in all the, I don't know how many people live in Augusta, 12,000 maybe. Um, but that's all and we are that have taken about advantage. about almost 50 towns that are. If, yes. Um, if there is a, uh, we need to resolve the, uh, the language uh, because we don't want to be doing this on the 9th because that's a public hearing well, to, you know, approve it for without substantive change. It seems to me that if, uh, if there is a quantity of the 46 towns that have not gone this way in terms of the state regulation wording, they have not gone that way? Is there some percentage of them that have? I mean, I could probably figure out what percentages it is, but... There's some percentage. Is there some number of towns who have gone that route? There are some that have gone that route where they didn't define it, and there are others that did define it exactly right. where the so state law take, says. Take the low, take the, uh, take the low road and take the regulation out and let's go forward with it, not worry about state regulation. Anybody agree? Second. <laughs> we didn't even ask. There was no motion on the table. It was a direction. <laughs> this is a, it's a question. The questions are motions, yes. That's correct. Second. I'm sorry, Eleanor, but it, I just want everybody to hear what you're saying. You're making good comments. No, no, no. We don't get out till 10 or 11. I just that's feel not. like that's how it used to be. And there was a reason why they did make regulations about people selling from their homes. Understood. Mm -hmm. Under, going back. Clearly understood. And I just think. I love your question. It's more, there's more um, convenience food, more people buying food, going out to eat and that kind of thing. You know, like when they did it before, it was much less. I just feel like if you open the door. There's going to be a lot more of that going. I know you're saying it doesn't, but just give, get the word out because I'm totally surprised. I didn't think that's what it was about. Mark. Um, I, I just want to say before we go ahead, if we're going to change Jeremy's, I'd, I'd like a motion on it because oh, yeah. I feel more comfortable going with the law. And, and the way it no, is. that's what we'll do. That's what we're going to do. But I just wanted to finish. I don't okay. want to finish thank comments. You. Eleanor, thank you for all your great comments. I agree with some of your concerns. Um, uh, there was a motion made to go without state requirement, seconded by Allison. Discussion. You should probably be very clear all about would, what All I would suggest. Right. Oh, I, no, go ahead. I, Make it more specific. I agree. No, no, that's that fine. To eliminate the. Um, and which occurs at the site of production? I think it says in where the local food product is produced. On site Words. or something to that effect. I don't see site of production. Licensing, actually. licensure and inspection section. It says it in there too. And then so going back to, and then delete, remove, and where the local food is produced from the definition. 
of one, direct fruit producer to consumer. Yeah. yeah. Let's go back one step and then and then, so let me take and delete the section in licensure and inspection. The motion. Why are we taking that out? I don't understand. Because so the majority of town people towns have been passing this ordinance for a while, even before the state law. And then there was enough whatever that the state passed a law saying, okay, this is fine. And there was a bill that went along with that that defined direct producer to consumer transaction with right. a, as a face-to-face -face transaction between the producer of the product and the, the buyer. Right. Um, that's what passed through the legislature. Then people realized that somewhere between that passing of the bill and when it got codified and written into main state statute, the definition, because sometimes they have to change things around sure. to make it all fit in with the code, that the words at the site of production somehow ended up in the state definition of direct producer to consumer transaction. Right. And it appears to have been, nobody knows. Nobody at the state is saying, Around oh no, we did that because of this. When did that happen? I think that happened on the second time around on this when um, this, the feds came in. Two years ago. When was like two years ago. Maybe. Two years ago. So the feds came back and the state passed food sovereignty and people's town started passing it. And then the feds came in, Department of Agriculture came in and said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Um, we, we've got a problem because it, did, it was not consistent with, with federal law meat. on poultry, mm -hmm. on meat on how they were inspecting meat. So that's why then all of a sudden this meat piece came in there, the poultry and meat piece got in there. Just to so clarify. But then most that. towns have still just continued. They only sort of just realized that there was this other. <clears throat> so why hasn't the legislature dealt with it? So I reached out to Hick their other stuff. <laughs> I reached out to um, Craig Hickman, the um, represent Democrat representative from Winthrop about this. And he's been, this, he's been spearheading this. He's a farmer. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. He'd been spearheading it. And we reached out to him and he came back with a, um, Yep, you're right. Legislative intent wasn't there. That's not what we intended. Right. But you're right, and be permissive, is what his answer was. That was that was not surprising to me that he was going to say be permissive. And I'm not I'm not talking that negative light. But what I'm going to do is withdraw with the motion you thought I made. Let's make a specific okay. motion. Exact language to be changed. Mm -hmm. He did say, just so you know, he did say they were working on these kinds of changes, and it was their intent for that not to be in there to begin with. Correct. That's what he indicated in his email, That's, yes. And there's precedent. Yeah. 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 So go ahead. Okay. Allison. So my motion would be to eliminate um, from this definition two, um, to eliminate the words um, at the end and where the local food product is produced. Um, and then Jeremy, where's- Licensure inspection section, 1A. Uh, is that? That's on page. Mm -hmm. It's on the yeah. last page of it. Yeah. Okay, one A. a, and then last last few words. Okay. Also, with no other party involved, which occurs, and then eliminate the words <laughs> at the site of. And which occurs oh. at the site of production. Yeah. There's no other party involved in the transaction. Period. And then period. Yeah. Yeah. That it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Second. <laughs> Any more discussion on those two changes? So you weren't, <clears throat> we're going to leave the, the piece about the um, the n notification? The, no, the we're going to change that, correct, to what you, you guys had talked about? No, I think we decided that the... Just leave it. Keep the, residential you, kitchen and then add in accordance with the Maine Food Sovereignty Act? No, I don't think we no, need no, that. No, no, no. We decided the two, that you're... The specific. two items, only the two items are part of the All motion right, and the you. second, that's what we're going to vote on. All those in favor of making those two changes, raise their hand. Against one. Four to one, Beth. Thank you, Jeremy. And then, oh, so want? that was the changes. Now we should right. vote on whether to send it forward to a public hearing. And the other ones, too. I did. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe Mark is okay with sending it to a public hearing, but... In, All right, go ahead. I don't know. Go ahead. And, it's fine with me. Other. We did, but we can do it again. It's not a problem. We, we just call it, the, it. call it the revised... When it's it, like when you vote a, on the amendment and then you have to vote on the amended. Make a, make a motion to send a revised food sovereignty um, ordinance. So moved. Okay. okay. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Five to one. Thank you, Jeremy. Move the other. Discussion is Do we want to move the other three forward to the public you. hearing Eleanor, also? Thank you very much. I hope to see you in the ninth.
Meat and poultry, yes. Poultry. Yes. Not seafood. No, my understanding is seafood is included in that. Oh, okay. Yep. Seafood is meat. It is fish. Hey, Bob. Uh, All right, we're going to debate food class. I, when I talk to them, <laughs> if that. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Vegan. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three forward too. Oh, no meat or poultry and seafood. Well, on to the next time, which is we need bid. to send the other three um, ordinances yes. forward to a public hearing. We already did. I don't think we did actually. I don't think so. All right. So <laughs> Sorry. Motion, I thought I heard all four, but okay, go ahead. We Beth, believe me, Bob, I'd be. I don't know. And then C, you had questions, and then D, you had questions. So we need to do the clean right. commun send the Clean Communities Act forward. Okay, that's right. the only one we have yeah. with the revised that's, revisions. That's yeah. Beth, did we do marijuana? It's not food? over yet. No, I don't no, think. No, this was all through discussion. Sorry. All right. This is the first motion on moving on forward. That's okay. I knew I wasn't getting that old. I think she contradicted you, but I think, okay. didn't you think that we did? Did, did, did you say we yeah. did motion or we did not? Do any. <laughs> so, just to be clear, mm -hmm. well, the clean communities are still revising, so but we can still we can still move uh, the other three to uh, motion to move the other three to public hearing. So, so moved. Sense. All four now. All of them. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, we already we already did food sovereignty, so there's right. three others we need to do. Mm. Right. Okay. And that was the motion that somebody made. I'll second yeah. Janice. Okay. All's in favor. Five zero. Thank you. On to bid award for drain piping. All right. Um, the, the Bayview Street Sanitary Sewer and Drainage Project. So on your bid tabulation, one thing that I want to note, um, it should not have included Rhino services because their bid didn't qualify. They didn't include a quantity for asphalt in that bid, so it was disqualified and we shouldn't have put it on the tabulation. So the low bidder is Ford Enterprises. Well, yeah, looks like it. Now, just to r roughly review the scope of work. Yes. Wait a minute. The low bidder is. It's Farley and Ford. Isn't it? That looks it's, like it's a, a combination. Well, of, combination of two numbers. Do we have to it's ask a together? combination of two numbers and, oh, okay. and two columns. So, Ford is approximately one hundred and ten thousand, and or one hundred fifteen thousand. Farley is one hundred and twenty-seven thousand. Yeah. All right. So, the, do you want me to? Give you Just the briefly, scope so the everybody understands sewer? what the scope is, yes. Okay, so for the sanitary sewer portion of this project, the goal is to eliminate the shared private sewer line that runs between Wilson Avenue and Fry Street. Mm -hmm. It's about 500 feet. Mm -hmm. And connect Wilson Avenue laterals to the new sewer line mm -hmm. and also giving proper access so they can maintain it. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be constructing a new upstream manhole, and that'll be at the intersection of Wilson Avenue and Bayview Street. Mm -hmm. Um, a new PVC sewer line that'll Where's go Wilson? from. Can we stop? Sorry. Where's Wilson Avenue? I'm... It's that. It's a. I think it's the one way right by Camden Harbor Inn. I believe you're right. Oh. I had to do that too. I was like, "What the heck? The Where's fries, that?" Fries further out. <laughs> well, all the road. Sure. No, yeah. Right. yeah, you're right. Oh, wow. Continue. It's not even a dead Continue end. with your scope no. discussion. Um, so a new PVC sewer line, and that'll go from the existing Bayview Street manhole to the new manhole. Right. That's going to be at the top of the Yacht Club's driveway. Right. And then connect the existing Wilson Avenue laterals to a new line on Bayview Street. Does this include the drain from that through the parking lot of the, uh, to the to the harbor? I'll get to that part. So this is just the sewer. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and also there'll be an interior drop in the existing manhole so that personnel can access that. All right. I got to bring up my. Sure. <laughs> I got one from Dave Bolstrich and one from Rick Seibel so they didn't have to come and explain this. Um, so we're grateful for you. <laughs> I thought after what we did to poor Dave Bolstrich oh, on totally last agree. Thursday that Again, we did anything know. that we could do to If he had come, I was moving it up on the agenda anyway. So it didn't, but anyway. We always say that, but then we forget. I know, I know. I know. Go ahead, Andre. All right, so for the actual storm drain, so the storm drain line on the section of Bayview from Wilson Ave to the outfall, which goes down to the Yacht Club, right. it's rotting and causing a lot of water to leach into the surrounding soils, which is you know, causing damage with the, the road. Um, and it undermines the pipe and the road. It causes a lot of sinkholes and fines are able to get into the, you know, into the harbor because it's all filtering through. Mm -hmm. And that further reduces the integrity of that pipe. Mm -hmm. So this would be, you know, replacing that and fixing all the sub base around it. 
Mm -hmm. And so, yep. The line that goes from Bayview to the ocean that's in the drainage quote? Yes. And that's that's why they're repaving, well, the road and yes. the parking lot at the Yacht Club? Not the whole parking lot, uh, just that. Just the portion you're damaging. Yep. Yes. Do you have any idea why the, the Farlington and Ford Enterprises bids are so so very different? Yes, so Farley, um, they included the paving in the sanitary portion of mm -hmm. their bid, mm -hmm. and so that's what caused them to be so much higher. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the two bids on the Farley and Ford are not that far apart. I can't, I, no, but the I'm way embarrassed they're, they're to say, I still can't figure them. out what we're supposed to be, because they've given a price per ton mm -hmm. also, but I don't know how many tons that is, is that factored into the? Yes. So we don't even need to know how much they're charging per ton for asphalt in order to figure not, this out. Yeah, not really, no. They're pegging, what they're doing is a very a civil project, is very standard to put in the unit cost of what they, how they calculated their price. So if there were significant amounts of dirt, they would give a unit price for that. If there's a significant amount of asphalt, they would give a price for that. That's the basis of their quote. But we don't need to know you that. Don't, you to don't decide. need to so worry about the price if per you're ton. Interested in paving a driveway. And we're not definitely not doing this separately. No, we're doing it all together. So we're doing all you it do together. Is yeah. Add the yeah. two numbers together. Yeah, and yep. That's correct. Yep. And then, yeah. and so there are pretty close. The Ford Enterprises. Oh yes. Okay, so. Yep. And Ford. Yeah. Yep. Okay. He's he's our up and coming. That's up and coming. He's our he's yeah. Is this his local. first road yeah. job for us? We won't uh, emphasize that today. Uh, but. No, but I think it's maybe his biggest job with us so far, he's which is a, great. He's done a great job he's, on the project. Yeah, really great. I would yeah. say that a lot. We've got people like Dan and Rhino, and during this period where construction prices have really increased, yeah. Yeah. they kind of went from they pivoted and were able to take advantage of that and build up their skills, and that's right. been great for us locally. And it's yeah. kind of a good news thing. So the two bidders who were qualified, their prices is only ten thousand apart. Yes. That's good news. Yes. Should, I, should we make a motion? Yeah, I'm I sure. make a motion that we accept the bid from Ford Enterprises. Second. For the Bayview Street drainage improvements. Uh, drainage and sanitary. I was just reading the top. Yeah. Bayview drainage and sanitary improvements. Thank you. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Happy Campers 5. Um, then we have, um, let's, oh, you have approval Master of one, two, three, four. Master drain layer licenses, which are plumber licenses, uh, for Warren Curtis, Timothy Hall, Richard Nash, and Michael Eaton. Uh, why do we do this? It's required by ordinance. Yeah, which is to your question, why do we do we this? Don't start a committee. We can start a committee. <laughs> it's like we're or is there maybe there's a benefit to this? Prohibition. But I am mean, not in a position to evaluate whether. What is? I I'd Tim say Hall that is great. He can't. Dave <laughs> Dave Bolstrich reviews. But I know some of them, but this is ridiculous. Dave Bolstrich and Rick Seibel review all of these, and they would. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So. So there's kind of a purpose. There's a process behind this. So you're not, you're kind of just rubber stamping and trusting that Dave and Rick. Nobody are. really cares no. what we think. I spend a lot of time in my free time learning about master drain layer licensing. So. Be a good consent agenda item. Sorry. Yes. Absolutely right. Yes. It would. Absolutely right. Actually, it'd be good. Just really wanted to give it's, these it's master the, drain layers the. It's on the long list of why are we doing it with her original question. I totally agree. This is not typically done. It's no, not a select it's board so item. Nice. It has nothing to do with policy. <laughs> but anyway, that's next. That's the, that's the next month. Make those requirements all part of the, you know, doing the project on city infrastructure. That's true. We're going to be doing the sewer project. Yep. 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 Right. So, would you like a motion? A motion. Yeah. Yeah. I move that we approve the master drain layer licenses for <laughs> Warren Curtis, Timothy Hall, Richard Nash, and Michael Eaton. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Onward to the update on the parking wayfinding signage. So this is a bit of a misnomer. We should have really kind of name this a little differently on the agenda. It's more like <laughs> the best we could come on. Direction. <laughs> Let's see. Parking directional signage is a much better way of explaining it. Um, to me. Direct people up to the That's just we'd all, yes. we'd already learned to yep. think about what wayfinding was. So yeah. <laughs> so I you know, um, this was I forget who asked, but I think Robin. it was at the 
Bob at the last select oh. board meeting made the point that, you know, now that we've got the lease purchase on the parking lots mm -hmm. and we're going to have all this additional parking available, it would be beneficial to start being more proactive about directing people towards these parking lots, which is completely logical and a good thing to do. So yeah, Robin McIntosh has been a strong advocate for this from yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That and yeah, that was mentioned at the budget committee, wasn't yeah, it? Yes, that's why. I brought it up at a workshop about as so as has the yeah, design too. team. Yeah. Oh so well. <laughs> well. Do you have a proposed design for us? I thought I thought we were looking at different approaches to the signage. So this is this, this is, is strictly just directional to get people direct, to the you know directional lots. signage for cars to get them to these <clears throat> parking lots. Right. Yeah. And it's really simple. We're just going. You know, we. Um, Jeremy and Rick Seibel went around town and kind of looked at what was existing areas where, you know, we really needed to put signage up to best direct people to these parking lots. So they've come up with sort of a list of recommendations for different lots, the Meadow parking lot, the public landing, Mechanic Street lot. What's Meadow? That's on the, um, the library, is it the? Yeah, it's over on off Atlantic Avenue, right? Oh. Are, are, uh, Just to be clear, is is design committee working on this? Um, they have talked about signs. Somebody's talked about signs. Which I mean, I, yeah, more so. than one committee we has talked about signs. Well, yeah, they are. They are working. They're looking to. They were. They've been looking for a long time to have, you know, some common traditional wayfinding signs. This is yeah. this is the. Very, this is like the blue peas. Yeah, one thing about parking signs, there, yeah. there are a lot of blue federal like, rules yeah. for yeah. blue signs with a white P on for parking. Oh, blue. Yeah, there are a lot of federal federal rules exactly. Signs yeah. you can have, and right. so this is a, and the, we, the yeah. reason they do that is so if you're driving here from Alabama, right. you know, oh, that means parking. Right. So there's a lot of cons. Right. cons this is like super simple. Parking yeah, is over there. Very simple. The oh, parking yeah. is there. Like the rudimentary yeah. stuff. Yeah. That's why wayfinding is a misnomer because it's not wayfinding. It's just directional, directional signs. Yeah. Left. Now it seems that this is now expanded to we're going to try to get people over to the library. They that parking lot fills up pretty fast. I don't know if we need to help people find it. No, there is, the, a, parking sign there. There is a sign there already. Oh, there and okay. there has it been. Is, there so is, there is. I feel. Can we just get this one little thing done without it turning into a massive? Yes, this is like Rick and I yeah. are just. This is just kind of an update to you folks that I think Rick and I are looking at where parking signs should go. Yeah, I just wanted to. It be just clear feels like it's not. It, I'm sorry, I'll say It's not really a. It's not taking much time at all. Jeremy. I just want to be clear, just because we have a tendency of you know, groups working on. I don't, uh -huh. want, to, I don't want to insult the design committee to doing a lot of stuff, and you know. But this, this is a sub. I'm hearing this is a subset of wayfinding. It's a simple subset about. I agree. The blue. I'd piece. say it's not even wayfinding. It's, it's, it's totally it's, different. It's just like, direct, it's a little bit piece. wayfinding, right? Blue. Yep. I think subset's probably a good okay. description. Okay. Good. All right. And the design committee couldn't change it anyway because because the standardized M M okay, cool. standards. Oh, I want to be clear, so they don't get, you know, no. muffled either. So they're because they're doing their thing. Okay, yeah. so these blue P's, yeah. I call them yeah. the blue P's directional signs. Yep. are going to be kind of placed and designated by yourself and Rick. Rick. So Consistently, every ten feet. Correct. Come into town. Correct. Yes. Exactly. No. So I will say. So when we first got Knowlton Street and yeah. the lots, right. Um, I had first when we when we first did that I said goodness to the design team and Rick as Rick's part of that I said you know you can't if you're coming down Washington Street mm -hmm. there's no sign tell you, telling you to go left on mechanic right, right. to go right then onto Knowlton right. to the parking lot and now Rick has put up a blue P yes the blue P now tells you to go left yes yes and so and looking at another location where there's where we're missing a sign is if you're heading south on Elm Street and you get to Washington Street right where we know there's parking. Mm -hmm. um, is that the spot? No, coming the other way, sorry. As you're heading, there is one because it's up on up on the wall of that building right there, big blue one. Sorry. But if you're heading north and you just come came past Thomas Michaels and everyone and you're coming up to Washington Street, there is no sign, blue P, telling you that there's parking down Washington Street. Okay. So there will be a hill, there's a signpost out there ready for a blue P. He'll be putting a blue P over there, right. um, and that's what this is. This is about finding the right locations to get people to our parking lots. I thought we were going to try to put at the places where people already try to park a lot, and, and that sometimes fills up. 
There was, it was just we had talked about, I had talked about that with Rick and, and he thinks that's a good idea. So we're going to do what we can to put some signage like on Mechanic Street lot and, and, and the public landing mm -hmm. on, because you pull in there and it's full. Where do you go? How do people know? Um, other than looking for the blue peas once they're back up on the main drag, right? right. So we're going to try to put some signage at the public landing and at Mechanic Street lot um, where there are other lots. Okay. So we're going to do that. And that doesn't have to go through any special design process. Or... Another standard. No. And do we have any, uh, we have budget to do these signs? Yes. Yeah. And this, you're probably not talking about more than about six or eight or ten P signs? Oh, that the, I, I think there's only two that I, I'm aware of that two P's that need to be put up right now. Oh, so that's really low dollars. I mean, people, yeah, if, if you're really paying attention, I mean, there's a lot of clutter downtown sometimes, right, signage, so you may miss a P. Um, um, because you just may not see it because there's everything else that out there but if you follow if you i've done this a few times every time i come into town i look and then yep. when i'm coming in at certain directions i'm like how do i get to our parking lots i think i would fault with more peas than less peas yeah well we don't have a lot of space to put the peas really don't. but really don't. all the real point is if you're on route one how do you get to our parking lots? Yes. And we can get them over to the metal lot, we can get them to the landing very easy, and we can get them to yeah. the fire station lot and, and I, Nolton. And I think you're right. the wording of this thing got me confused because I know wayfinding is well. Yes, it was confusing. The line committee is really, and this is, is clarifies parking directional signage, mm -hmm. so I'm set. Cool. Yeah. And as far as wayfinding, I will say a number of years ago when they did, um, I think it was in the downtown master plan, um, or was it in the um, river walk? I don't remember exactly, but there was in one of the plans that was done. Um, was done. There were uh, um, they engaged one of the consultants did do wayfinding signage mm, in I that know. in that proposal. Yeah, it was not, I mean, not crazy robust sign plan, but it was a good enough sign. Yeah. I think wayfinding plan that if we ever get to that point, we could probably pull out that. Right. Wayfinding plan that was already done, right. and get right. someone to right. to implement so, that. It's a criticism of the status quo, but yeah, that's true. Yeah. Is this will be done this spring? Oh yeah, Rick's been doing it as okay. as he finds Just it. Clarification, that's good. Yeah. Great. Any other questions? You don't need any action from us, right? None. No, no, no. Please. Uh, Poor Jeremy. Yes. I didn't really want any. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy. <With> the, uh, <laughs> item twelve is to uh, this is like I have Allison explain it, but we need to vote to restrict the MRC tip stabilization funds to be used in the closure of the Jacobs Quarry landfill, which FYI is mid-cool solid waste. Audra has a lovely motion prepared. Oh, I love what she does. I'm sorry, I should have had that. Well, while she's digging that up, this yeah. is all about the monies that we received, the town um, received from mid -coast solid waste for just this. And we just, we need to clarify this for accounting uh, purposes in getting the uh, auditor yeah, so to approve. Basically, we have there are any number of reasons that we might want to clarify this. But um, so, at one point, we got like six hundred thousand dollars or five hundred thousand dollars. How much did we get back? Four hundred and fifty-three dollars. Fifty-three thousand. Right. Okay. Actually, four hundred fifty-three thousand dollars. <laughs> right. And if you combine, then we've gotten some other <laughs> really disappointing other things. It's about four hundred fifty-three dollars. <laughs> From the the MRC, which was what you know the group that we were a part of before we started sending our trash to Eco Main, um, and that money, the Mico Solid Waste Board um, had sort of been trying to get the towns to commit that money, along with a couple other pool pockets of money that came back from the similar arrangement, to the um, eventual closure costs for the landfill. We're all, all four towns are bound by various legal agreements um, to pay for the cost of not only closing down that landfill eventually, but also the ongoing mm -hmm. cost of it. It's not just Midco Solid Waste sort of oversees it and recommends, but really even if like Camden decided they didn't want to be part of Midco Solid Waste anymore and we wanted to start our own transfer station somewhere else, we would still have to pay our percentage of the closure costs. So um, since it's expected to be $2.5 million just to close it and then another couple million dollars to take care of it over 30 years and then there's going to be more after that, it's good to 
set aside that money now. So it had always, and we've talked about this before, but since select boards change and um, the auditor in trying to do the audit from Midco Solid Waste said, whoa, you have this huge unfunded liability because you're like a million dollars short for what you're going to need. And the town said, no, 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 we know, you know, th that money isn't held by, eventually we might give it back to Midco Solid Waste and have it all four mm -hmm. towns hold the money mm -hmm. together. Um, right now, for a variety of reasons, we're not doing that, but we want to, and I think we've done little votes before in the past, and we may have to send this out to town meeting as well, but we just need a vote that says, yes, we know that this money is going to be used only whether it resides with us or it resides over there at Minco Solid Waste, um, which we also voted to, you know, authorize that when we see fit. But for now, we want to vote that we know that it is going to be used only for closure costs, okay. wherever it sits in the meantime. Do you have the motion? I do. So the motion is to restrict the use of all MRC tip stabilization funds returned to the town of Camden for the eventual closure of the Jacobs Quarry landfill in order to fulfill the town's obligation specified in Part 4, Section 4.2 of the amended interlocal agreement establishing the Midco Solid Waste Corporation. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion, questions? Those in favor? Unanimous, Beth. Yeah, I thought we had voted on it the previous. We kind of did, but uh, this specific that language was, is, is more specific. That was the first. So that was before I was on the select board. Right. It went to town meeting and everything, and it was the for like seventy-seven thousand mm -hmm. dollars of that, mm -hmm. and that was yes, that was the put option for mm -hmm. um, right. mm -hmm. those who care. There's still hope that there might be some state funds for closure, or is that oh, closed? that was mm -hmm. gone. But so this really should, that, I think that exact thing could go, should, can and should go to town meeting. Yep. Sure, that same motion. And so I don't know if we should move that now or. Yeah, why don't, why don't you. I think, ball rolling yeah, to, I, why don't you just, I mean, well. We really don't, if we, is it, you mean a town meeting, uh, the open town meeting? You want to double yes, what that's what yeah. done in the past. And um, we, the or it, we actually, yeah. we can actually do that April 9th or today, either one. Lincolnville, I mean, we might want to oh, look at the wording. It. The way that Lincolnville did it actually, I think, is sort of okay. Um, that it, it also, their motion at town meeting also authorized the select board to then transfer the money um, to Midco Solid Waste if it was determined that that was the better thing to do and after holding right. a public hearing. So we have a couple. Excuse me. We have a couple. We have a couple items that we have to address April 9th similarly, uh, that we're going to bring up um, a couple of things. But we could put it in that same category on April 9th, yeah. or we can do it now. It doesn't make a difference. But uh, we, we, that's a big warrant night for us. That's our last night nice. to approve things for mostly for printing for the secret, uh, for the ballot. But well, I mean, this is this is easy <laughs> enough. I know if I know you all want it on the warrant, yeah. we'll just make sure it goes on. That's that, I think yeah. We can we can motion that now. Right, and it doesn't have to be, the deadline isn't so soon because it's not the printing deadline. Um, it's for, that's just for the will, ballots. It's for absentee ballots for, and all that. For the secret ballot. Yeah, yeah. Correct. and yeah, correct. this is time. But well, we could motion that now. So move. Mm, yeah, we probably shouldn't because we need language for it anyway, but, uh, or should we vote on the concept or? I mean, I, I know you want to do it, we, so we, we'll we make wanna, sure that we, we have the prepared. It. We can bring it up yeah. on April 9th okay. if we want okay. to with exactly. Nice just take, yeah. take right. that back. Right. So Jody will be here with us? Yes. During, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll give her a briefing on this. And there's a couple other things, too, um, in regards to open floor. Yes. Warrant articles. We have a couple of those. Yeah, there, there's a few that have been requested that are a little different than normal. So I'll make sure that. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I have a couple written down, but we don't want to miss those. Right yeah, for the for the open floor articles right. that have been requested that are a little different than the stuff that gets put on every year. Right. You could like in April if you if this is what you're most comfortable with, you can talk about it while, you know, Jody's here, and then for those particular ones, you can vote on them. I believe the first meeting of May, and still be fine for. Because you don't have the, there's no printing deadline. Correct. Right. We Correct. have that whole schedule that yeah. Katrina sent us. No, I agree. We, we have a couple items. Okay. 
Um, the, uh, there is in the packet uh, tonight um, two financial items. One was the, well, just um, the uh, through March um, uh, um, P and L or accounting for the for the general fund, and the um, latest update on the snowball financial situation. Um, if there are any questions on the finances, I'm sure we could entertain them, but I would suggest we get we gather those. I, I didn't see anything in my review of, this, of any, any consequence in terms of the, um, any of the operations. They're all looking pretty darn good. That's a question? Of course. Uh, number 11 on the agenda, discussion on proposed legislation. We, we, we tabled it. We tabled it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, front. That's the one we... Uh, said the legislation is just starting. Blah, blah, blah. I remember That's fine. That's fine. I have a nice chat with Vicky about it. And That's great. That's great. We're going to have more talk about it. Um, so the snowball, um, the summary, as you saw in the packet, we're last. Well, I think it was yesterday. Was they did? It's about ninety, about ninety thousand now. It's not ninety nine anymore. Yep. Ninety thousand because of intru inclusions. However, uh, for Joey's notes um, to that today that came in her notes today that. That we're looking at a fairly chunk, good sized chunk of bills that are stacked yep. up about forty thousand dollars from CMP, and that's not the end of it. Yep. Um, to um, uh, salaries, our labor costs have been kind of stabilized around eleven or twelve thousand yeah. per week, and we haven't that. So we there's at least one more week of that left, and then beyond that, the only thing we have to account for is well, this is the last week of that, except right. for Beth right. and Holly salaries for, because that will be for April. Yeah, just I mean, just to kind of. <clears throat> State it publicly. Um, the way that the snowballs budgeted, April first, and moving forward, that's sort of the deadline when all the Parks and Rec staff or the snowball staff become Parks, parks and Rec, Rec staff again and start doing Parks and Rec Makes work, sense. except for Holly and Beth, and they stay on as snowball until May first. So you add all that up, and I'm anticipating, I'm guessing, looking at, not guessing, but we're probably going to be looking at 35, 40 K, maybe. 40,000. Yeah. And something to keep in mind, we've got a major expense because we need to do yes, um, just yes. that this is sort of, I forget if it's every three or five years, but major yes. um, maintenance on one of our groomers, and that's $30,000 yeah. to do that right. maintenance. And that's in the budget for next year? Yes. Yeah. And we, but we were sort of counting on having this yeah, thirty thousand yeah, to be well, able to do that. But anyway, that's kind of the status of where it looks at the moment, um, uh, because there's always expenses that are flying. And CMP bills are not done after this forty thousand. No, no way. but not to that level. Oh no way! Is no that way. how much of a time period is that? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I. I forget, but also one thing to keep in mind, CMP has been significantly overbilling us uh -huh. townwide. Uh -huh. So we're looking at getting a refund from them of $15,000 or so how across did, the how board. Did, how did that, how did we discover that? Or how do we, did they yeah, tell us or did, we're, we're, there's a, yeah. They, I look sometimes and I'm like, I don't know. Well, well we've noticed it was really high. And so we mm -hmm. kind of started digging into it and then CMP got in touch with us, and then when Marlene looked into it a little bit more, she was able to split it up between the six accounts. And what did they do? So, are, is this part of that whole Ruined. scandal? That yeah, they, yeah, I think so. Sure. Should we? We should. Well, what they were going to do is apply it as credits to our account, and we said no, we don't want credits to our accounts. We want a refund because if we if it was just credits, some of the accounts that were overbilled, it would take us years to. Yeah. You know, so so how did we? Because sometimes people have trouble proving this, or can we go more? I feel like in solidarity with a lot of the people that are having problems individually, that we should talk about this more. Or I mean, because they a lot of sure. people on their own don't have the ability to push back. But it sounds like we were able to say. It's a major. I don't know, I'm just curious major what they did. Position. They admit that. Did oh yeah, smart meters or no? They they admitted that they were overbilling us on purpose. I think it was all accidental and part of the whole. Mark, go ahead. I was going to say it might be a good idea. I know that uh, 
we'll, we'll have reporters watching the meeting, and it might yeah. be a good idea for them to contact and it might be yeah. too late to contact you, just yeah, so, so to run a story about it so people are aware of what's going on and that we caught That's this. That's probably, that is mm -hmm. a great idea. But they have, yeah. been, they yeah. have been some stories Science about it. It's a great story. Yeah, yeah, it is a good story. It's a okay. large chunk of change. Susan, Linda. Steve backs even <laughs> <I know>. in. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, you know, because we have six accounts, yes. the snowball is only a small, well, I mean, not insignificant, but it's not like that 15,000 is an all snowball. Right. No, of course not. Spread out. happy to have money come back to the rest of the town, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a lot of money. Yep. Anyway, um, so we'll, we'll monitor Snowball again on April 9th, but by that time we're going to have a really clear definition of what's going on because you're going to still you're going to still see some you know five digit number on on power. Yes, it won't be forty thousand though. No, no. But it's it, been a, been a very good year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Fine um, conditions. They did a great job. Yep. Yep. So with that, um, that's the end of our established agenda. I want to adjourn the meeting and, and have a motion to enter into an executive session per 1 um, MRSA section 4056A personnel. That motion moved. So moved. All those in favor? Thank you all. Thank you, Beth. Can we cut us off some more? Oh, yes, I can. You turned off. Um, wait, look.